agenda um, from I, I, the agenda from our um, July, our August meeting, as well as our uh, special meeting that we had, um, that was our retreat with Dr. With Dr. Carpenter. Um, so do I have a motion to approve? Oh, wait, no, the agenda. Sorry, not the, not the minutes, the agenda. Do I have a, a motion to approve the agenda as sent out? Sorry, guys. I moved, Booker. A second? Second, Woodard. Okay, wonderful. Any discussion or any changes or additions? Okay, all in favor? Uh, Robbie? Aye. Paul? Aye. Rodney? Aye. Don? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Benji? Aye. Michelle? Did Michelle make it on? Oh, there she is. I'm on, but I didn't hear the motion, so I'm not going to vote. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, that's everybody though, right? Any opposed? Okay. Uh, the agenda is approved. Okay. Um, do we have anyone, Brad, who wanted to make a public comment? Somebody uh, got chirping dog. Pardon me? I'm, I'm still just fielding audio questions. I have oh, turned okay. on the closed caption though, so. Okay, great. Okay. Well, just let us know if anybody um, would like to make a public comment. Yes, um, ma'am. All right, great. Let's move on to approval of the minutes. Uh, we are going to be looking at the minutes from the regular August board meeting and the special board meeting that was our retreat in September. Uh, those minutes were sent out in advance, uh, posted in our shared drive. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved, Benji. Okay, a second. Second, Paul. Okay, any discussion or changes or additions? That was a motion to approve the special and regular yes. um, special meeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Robbie. Aye. Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Don. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Uh, the minutes are approved. Okay, we are now going to move on to our Athletic Booster Club report. And Lori Woodard is, I, I see that she's on here. So um, she's going to do the report for us. Good evening. Um, so financial report is $36,827 that we currently have in our account. Uh, with that being said, um, we have purchased um, the chairs, but we have not received the invoice for that, the padded chairs for the gym. We are also in the process of getting a new trophy case um, to go outside of the gym lobby. So that hasn't been subtracted as well. And um, banners for the gym, for district, regional, and uh, state championships are also going to be purchased. So we are trying to make over the gym, make it look a little bit better and um, more appeasing when people come in. So that is what we're working on. Um, membership forms, we are still working on those because we're having to make adjustments with, you know, the virtual offering virtual passes um, and because the school's taken over whenever we are able to go into the gym and see games they're taking over the gate fees um so we're trying to make some changes to our membership forms but we're waiting to get uh the contract and the prices from the camera company to see how much you know they're going to give us and go from there um so hopefully by next by the end of next month we will have those membership forms approved and able to send out to um, to all of our members. 
and just wanted to remind you the padded chair. I'm sorry, padded chairs. Yes, we have been ordered and they will be here the first part of October, probably. So hopefully they'll be there in time for whenever we start to have athletic and other events in the gym. And don't forget our spirit wear store is extended until September, the end of September. Um, so please take advantage of that. There's all kinds of spirit wear on there. There's also a mask in there as well. So please take advantage of that. And the cameras that will go into the gym for, you know, athletic events or other events like the band concert and that kind of stuff, um, they will be installed the first part of November. Um, Gail is waiting on an exact date, but that was what she had given me today. And I think that's it. I think that's all we have at the moment. Does anybody have any questions for me? Lori, have you paid for the cameras at this point with your, um, or no? So the Robbie, correct me if I'm wrong. If you know this, I'm probably going to say it wrong. The NCHSA, I think that's right. <laughs> Um, they waived the installation. I'm sorry. It might have been the installation and the price of the cameras um, because of the COVID. So as far as I know, we did not have to pay for that. We took advantage of that since that right now those are free. Um, but we do have to pay for, you know, once an event is happening, if somebody wants to um, link into it, they have to they have to pay for it. So that's getting, you know, just like paying for internet, I'm assuming. So that's the only thing we're waiting for as far as what the price is, you know, if we can do like per season or per event to, to charge for. Does that answer your question, Nicole? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you so much uh, for that report. I'm really excited to know that the spirit wear is still available and that there are masks. That uh, seems to be the, the newest way for most organizations to get their name out there. It's a, yeah. a very unconventional way to market, but um, seems <laughs> to make sense these days. So uh, that's great. Um, very exciting. And thank you so much uh, for the report. We appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh-huh. Um, as far as I know, we do not have anybody from Student Government Association. Is that correct? Nobody's here. Okay. All right, then. Um, let's move on to our superintendent's report. Dr. Edwards, take it away. Good evening, everybody. Um, is it okay if I share my screen? Just I want to show something kind of fun. So I'm going to do that. Absolutely. All good things. All right, let's get through. Well, I'll wait just a moment. All right. Okay, so here's my report. I'll quickly go through the first two items and then want to show you um, something for number three. So return to school update right now. Things are going really well. On average, now that we've got all of our students who wanted to be on campus, um, on campus, we have about 500 students uh, that we are teaching on campus each week, which is, um, I think it's pretty exciting. And we are quite proud of that, that we have been able to do that, offering um, K-12 instruction for Plans B. And then for our families who, who also want fully remote, we are still able to do that as well. So just very proud of the work that's done and continues to be done. It's been great having the middle schoolers back. Um, they just bring a, a certain kind of energy to campus and we are happy to have it. Our ADM update, it looks like we are going to be official at 9.33. I'm speaking with Brad who has been keeping a really strong pulse on any kind of legislation that's coming about about holding harmless the schools. Um, we are waiting to find out if we will be able to stay um, at the number we were expecting, which is 942. So um, as soon as I have more information, I will share that out. But that is that is where we are right now. Um, 
I've been talking a lot about the modulars ever since I started attending board meetings and I'm quite happy to share this with you. They're here. And they look fantastic. So we are beyond excited that they are finally here, not necessarily um, as quickly as we were hoping, but they they have made it. Footings were poured, everything was done, buildings have been set, skirting was installed. And so now it's just getting the utilities and communications put together and connected to the building. The ramps need to be put in, some things with the fire uh, devices and emergency plans, and then we get to open. But just one more little shot at um, those of you who knew what it looked like before and what we were able to, to replace it with. It's, it's pretty exciting. So I'll stop sharing now because I need to be able to see. Oh, hello. All right. So moving back, the next item is just an update on map testing. We continue to test students. It is um, uh, quite a feat to test all K-12, I'm sorry, K-10. And so up to this point, K-5 is finished with reading and K-4 is finished with fluency. Um, the high schoolers, ninth and 10th grade, have completed reading as well. We are continuing to work through math and science, and we hope to be finished by October 6th. And Ms. Nowinski and I will be presenting to you a report on how we did at the October board meeting. The last item that I have is um, a bonus plan that I would like to talk through a bit. So. And um, in listening to and paying attention to finance meetings and uh, messages that have been coming from the state, we were notified that performance bonuses, um, which are typically given to teachers whose students perform well on end of grade tests, that those were being reallocated to all teachers and uh, support staff because there was no end of grade test, there was no way to gauge a way to give that performance bonus. And so essentially the state has told us that there is about $22,000 coming our way to which they want us to pay $350 to our teachers and our support staff. Now, I think that that is a, a, a lovely sentiment, but I think news can do just a little bit better. Um, I think that we should consider giving a $500 bonus to all of our employees, not just our teachers and not just our instructional support staff. I know that there was communications about bonuses in the past. Um, there was really no way for us to determine a performance bonus this year, just like the state did. And in talking about how to recognize this, the sheer amount of work that people have done, the flexibility, the, the communication, all of the pieces of every single moment that have happened since COVID, I think that it is certainly um, something to consider. And so this is a budget neutral request with the amount of money that we are gonna be given by the state to cover this bonus. I'm asking for $21,806 to cover a $500 bonus for all 89 employees at News Charter School. Um, Dr. Edwards, could you repeat that total 21? $21,806. So uh, that you are getting, this is Dawn, you are getting 22,000 from yes. the state. I make a motion to uh, um, approve the bonus structure outlined by Dr. Edwards. This second. is Michelle, Robbie. second. All in favor. Oh, well, Any actually, discussion? discussion, discussion, sorry. Okay, all in favor, Robbie, uh. Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Don. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. 
Aye. Michelle. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Very, very grateful. Thank you. Um, in keeping with that line of conversation, there are two areas that I am focusing a lot of my efforts on right now and will continue to do so is in the compensation area when we think about recruiting and retaining high level top quality teachers. Um, I'm, I'm actively engaged in a compensation review and I will present that to you in November um, for consideration of implementation in January. The other area is the HR support plan, still working through that um, with the hopes of being able to put something into practice in October. Um, and yeah, that's all I have tonight. Right now, anyway. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Any any questions? Dr. Dr. Edwards. Dr. Edwards, this is Michelle. Just a quick question. When you were talking about the MAP testing, is that going to be done? And you talked about um, elementary and high school. Is it going to be done all grades six through eight as well? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah, it's K through 10, right, Dr. Edwards? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the, the kindergarten through fifth grade is finished with reading and fluency and the high schoolers have finished is because we've been able to have them a little bit longer. The middle schoolers came back yesterday. We've got a new group coming on Thursday. So we're going to start working through that very quickly with them. Dr. Edwards, your um, the schedule that you just set out for the two other items is that for discussion at um, in those months or are you expecting approval? Um, maybe both. <laughs> um, well, I, I would just um, request that, especially on the compensation, which can tend to um, have a lot of uh, financial um, aspects to it, that we are given information at least a month in advance um, because it's very hard to just get things a couple of weeks and then be able to digest it to have a productive conversation if you expect a vote. Um, okay. And, you know, so I would hate to throw your schedule off. Um, so I would just encourage um, you to send information early to the board if you required a vote in November. Okay, thank you. Uh, hearing no other questions, thank you, Dr. Edwards. We appreciate your report. Um, we're going to move on to our uh, committee reports. Uh, the executive committee did not meet in September, so um, academic affairs did not meet, correct, Don? Act correct, okay. Correct. Okay, um, let's look at finance. Benji? Yes, ma'am. The uh, Finance Committee met on September the 14th, 2020. Uh, highlights from that meeting include uh, we've reviewed the budget tracker as presented by Dr. Edwards. Some of the changes that we uh, noted on the budget tracker was the ADM uh, decrease. What we discussed there was a 942 ADM number instead of the 965 that was in the initial budget. But that ADM reduction was offset by an increase in the per pupil allocation. And like uh, Dr. Elver said, there's also some pending hold harmless legislation that will uh, you know, prevent the penalizing schools for the enrollment loss due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and which may also you know, provide some other upside to our ADM calculation. Um, on the revenue line, overall, as part of the budget tracker, the revenue line increased by $61,194 mainly due to increases in the state and federal funds. Uh, there was uh, expected uh, expenses, and our expenses increased by $49,278, and that was primarily due to investment in staff development, uh, Title II and Title IV program cost. Those uh, pluses and minuses all result in a revised surplus to the budget of $12,977. Uh, next up, we'll talk about the August month budget results. We looked at those budgets. The revenue for August was $580,207. The expenditures for August was 
$171,774, giving us a deficit of $91,566 for the month of August. As I mentioned last month, we're going to be in arrears until the local revenue payments start showing up. So we are you know, negative for the last two months. Uh, the account balances for our cash accounts on our operating account, we have $752,622 in our reserve account. We have $852,371. There is also a retirement account as well as a fundraising account. If you add those four accounts together, we are at 1.6 uh, million. It's one, uh, $1,675,886. So in the uh, in finance committee meeting back on September 14th, we had discussed this in the past, but Dr. Edwards's recommendation after her review with Acadia and discussion with the finance committee was to transfer $462,000 from the operating account to the reserve savings account. Doing so would bring our reserve account balance to roughly $1,315,000. So just looking for a motion to transfer that or discussion around that topic. So uh, do I, I think to follow, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think to follow our rules, we need to have a motion first and then discussion, correct? Motion first and a second and then discussion. And then discussion. That's what I thought. So do we have a motion regarding moving this money from the operating account to the reserve savings account? So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Trabi. Okay. Discussion. Questions? Comments? I, I'll just say, I mean, Benji and I talked about this some too, as, as part of our long-term planning um, I think it's important that we have got the cash reserves. We need to think about what the auditor told us before for a balance. But most importantly, I think we need to start thinking about a like a like a one, two, and three year goal that we want to kind of establish and set some guidelines around that account. If you remember when we started, we didn't even know how much the operating account was using. We had in fiscal year transition, so we just kind of stepped into that slowly. Now that we've got a you know a good size reserve there, I still think we need somewhat of a multi-year plan to help guide us because what we're doing right now is at the end of the year we're just saying, well, how much cash have we got left over, and what can we do with it? It's good to have that, but it's better if we have a multi-year plan with targets we set for, so that then when we're making trade-offs or we're doing fundraising, whatever we're doing, it's against an actual plan. Uh, but at least we've got some reserves, so that's a good place to be in. But now we could really start looking more to multi-year. And, and Rodney, so, uh, sorry, Don. R Rodney, can you remind us what what the auditor did say regarding those reserves? Now, if you're going to ask me for the exact numbers. I I, I don't remember. Just, just, I, you know. can look. I, I, had, I think I remember how many months of operating they, they, they recommended, but at the time that was just too far-fetched for us. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, if, is that part of your multi-year plan that we um, start to really try to build? I think he says six months, which is... Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I thought. I, don't remember. I just didn't want to say it, but I think it was six months. Yeah, um, I thought he said six months, and that, that's a, a little bit. And so if we keep, you know, uh, dipping into the reserve for various things, which may be other goals, but is in in your mind would a very first or in Benji um, uh, as well, first goal be to try to hit that? Or do you think that that is just um, probably way too much for a school this size? My, my experience says that it, it's not unreasonable to hit the goal. You're, you're not gonna hit it in a couple of years. And you'll never hit it without focus. Um, I, my experience, I think the number's a little high. Um, what's more important to me is we need to get a list of priority investments, you know, for the institution. And we can weigh those trade-offs against cash in the bank versus investment priority. Um, those things have to go hand in hand. Because I'll tell you, if you sit here and say, well, we're going to get to, you know, six months is $4 million. 
I mean, to get another, you know, I don't know what it is, right? Close to 2 million, you're going to get cash reserve in the bank. You will have some major resource development efforts that generate a lot of cash, or you're going to really going to have to take it out of an operating budget to get to that kind of number. Um, it, it's just not feasible in the next couple of years, unless there, like I said, there was some amazing resource development that came out of somewhere. So, well, uh, I mean, you know, with Dr. Harris from the beginning, we had quite a cash reserve for that, for the high school building and without major fundraising. But yeah. that was that yeah. was her, you know, her approach to money management. Um, yeah. But so and, 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 and so the Finance Committee, Benji, will be taking on some suggestions for these goals or. Yes, I would love to discuss those and as a group, figure out where our plans are to invest that money. Um, can, can I just ask too that um, I want to make sure that we're, we're really staying clear um, based on everything we learned in our retreat and everything. It, it seems like a lot of this should be driven at the school level is, you know, um, so that Melissa as superintendent can be setting the goals for fiscal responsibility for fundraising and all of those things. Is that, is that accurate or is the, is the reserve account separate from that? I don't know enough about how it works. So I'm, I'm asking a question as much as anything. I think, I think it's the way we talk about it. I think we're, we're all saying the same thing. It's just the language is a little bit, but is, is the super should pretend to us with a multi-year plan of Perfect. where she would like to, you know, invest and make trade-offs and she, she should, the superintendent should bring that plan to us. However, we should have a position as the ones that are ultimately accountable to the office of charter schools about what does, what does sound fiscal standing look like for us? Yep. Cause I can tell you when I took over treasure, zero cash in the bank was not sound fiscal standing. Right? And Absolutely. You know, maybe when we need to take a stance that, well, you know what, maybe 4 million in the next two years is too high. I mean, that's unrealistic, right? So we, we've got to kind of have a position as a governing board. What, what are we comfortable with over the next three years? Right? I mean, because you could come up and say, well, I want to invest three quarters of that in a very similar projects and put us back down, you know, in a, in a low single digit number. And we could say, no, no. It's not acceptable. So I think we need to have some view of fiscal responsibility so that that guides her as she makes her investment and spending plans um, that, that it's some bounds that we're comfortable with. Right. I, I appreciate well, that. But I, I will say, Rodney, go ahead, Don. I was just going to say, would this also include a discussion on debt reduction? Um, it, it should. That should, that should be part of a multi-year plan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's the discussion we had about refinancing the, um, you know, those loans with self-help. Mm -hmm. Now, again, those are that's really that's a facilities discussion, really, because we're right. We're the we're the tenant in a, in a lease lease or relationship with the facilities corporation. But we knew that that was them getting being able to get that done based on our sound fiscal standing, by the way, is what's actually enabling us to hopefully do that. You know, that's going to save us like, you know, a million plus dollars in interest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I, I would I, I would say, Jane, that these are high level discussions for the board as well in, in concert with um, Dr. Edwards. When right. you're talking about that level in terms of debt and investment and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Right. But I, I appreciate what Rodney clarified that the multi-year plan, it would be typically, we would be having Dr. Edwards sort of prepare that oh, brain absolutely. to us. Yeah. And that's, that's the part where I was making sure that I was understanding, but yeah, they're definitely for, in terms of oversight, the very high level things that you guys are talking about definitely sits at the board level. Robbie, what well, were you going to, let me give you, let me give you an example. Here's an example. When we started, if you remember a few years ago, we talked about the ratio of, uh, you know, your operating budget in regards to salaries and benefits versus your, um, you know, versus your overall operating expenses. And at the time we were running around 75 to 76%, if I remember right. 
And that was very, that was a lot of strain on the budget because any little changes in any of that conversation just sent us over to water rate. So those are very high level guidelines about like, what's our, what's our debt to income ratio? What does our cash flow picture look like? You know, those are, those are strategic board level guidelines that we would set around some of them. We never got to that right as a finance committee, just because we, we were in the bowels of, of, of a lot of those stuff. But I think we're to the point now we've got some comfortable cash reserve. We should really be thinking strategic multi-year out with some guidelines around at the board level, what the sound fiscal state of the institution look like? Not, not, does, do, do you spend money on things on the walls, chairs, or whatever, right? No, no, that's all below the line for me. Right. Great. Thank you. Robbie, did you have something that you were going to ask? No, it wasn't going to ask. I, I was going to say, so if you look at the last three years, though, we've had, we maintained somewhere around $350 plus thousand dollars uh, in reserve. So I, I just think it's important exactly what you said, Jane, the, the conversations that we have um, do cause uh, Dr. Edwards to think, you know, maybe outside the box, maybe outside, you know, the, the board's kind of pushing me a certain way. So we have to be careful with that um, because we have all have our own strategies as far as the way we want to run our own businesses, our homes and that type of thing. And I think it's right to be safe. I think it's right to maintain the right reserves and get some guidance there, but we do have to be careful how we, um, how we carry that, you know, through with Dr. Edwards. I, I definitely concur with that and appreciate that. And, um, and my understanding, um, Benji, am I correct that this is a recommendation that, um, that Dr. Edwards and the finance committee jointly are making to to get us back to the motion that we are discussing. <laughs> um, that this is a, a recommendation that you're jointly making, correct? This came from Dr. Edwards. It was what she brought to the finance committee after discussion with Acadia and with the finance committee themselves. And this does leave 500K in the operating account. So a little bit larger than we have in the last couple of years, but that's what we feel safe with timing of bills, what it's going to cost for COVID stuff, how the revenues are going to come in, all of that is kind of unknown. So leaving a little bit more buffer than usual with those, the knowledge of those concerns, I guess. Perfect. Okay. And, Any and other just to questions? Just to clarify, right. it is 462,000, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And just, Any clear, just one clarifying point. Robbie, the, the point you made about the 350, what was that in, were you talking about the amount that we left for transition from like one year to another? Is that a number you were referencing? That was the amount that we moved from, moved into reserves for the last three years. So we oh, got okay. It. okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. I got it. I, I think we need to um, kind of in that high level strategic policy or, or position we as a board take is the amount of money that gets left in our operating account at the end of the year as a carryover balance, I think we should set some guidelines as an example to what that number is. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So meaning if we say, you know what, we want to take two months of operating expenses and that would be each carryover year that would just stay in the account, do it as a percentage or whatever. So it's a fixed number. So that we don't every year have to have that discussion on top of how much you move. But now that we're in this, we can get more predictable about what those things are. And they just be more seamless as we have them at the end of the fiscal year. Absolutely. And, and can we call that 500K that um, Benji referenced? That is actually above and beyond our budget. Correct. So what, what that is, is, so at the end of the year, at the end of the fiscal year, when our books close on June 30th, okay, the, the excess money that is in the operating account from that fiscal year's budget that you didn't spend, cash in the bank, how much of that do you leave in that operating account that's going to sit there on July 1st when your new fiscal year starts? Does it rain? Benji referenced 500 K that is currently in operating. And my question was, is that over and beyond our current budget? 
Yes, that is before. That says January 1, before the current budget started. So before Thank we received you. the revenue from state, federal, local funds. So yes, outside of the budget. Thank you. You're welcome. And what we're talking about here at uh, the end of this discussion, it's all in accordance with our strategic plan. You know, because we've talked about some of these things and, and how does that relate into the strategic plan? So are we, you know, I see the need, but I'm trying to figure out, making sure that this is going to fit into that. And based on what the work you've done to date on that, Jane, I assume that that is all part of some of that development, correct? Well, we honestly haven't done anything that gets to what, what we've been doing up to this point in the strategic planning is really trying to get the drill down into the data to tell us where we are right now. My understanding of what we're doing of, of what this vote is about is just to move money basically into a savings account. We mm -hmm. can still access it in the event that we need it, but, okay. um, but I don't think, right. thank you, Benji. So, I, but um, I mean, I certainly don't think we're doing anything now that would go against what we've looked at okay. in the strategic planning up, process up to the, this point. Okay. But there's an intent. Yeah. To go, there, there's an intent to go down a path. Is 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 what I'm hearing too. Yeah. So I, I, that's, I'm totally. Well, really. So. Really, the path is going to be going more towards Superintendent uh, Edwards, and in fact, I'm yeah. assuming right. that her desire to move this money is part of her big, broad plan in her head that maybe we don't have all the details on, but that's fine. Um, so this is this is probably a critical, you know, an important step in that. Um, right, because we're just reallocating money. She has a reason yeah. for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's important that we remember there's two dimensions of the discussion. One is what is what is the fiscal management for the institution look like? What are the guidelines around that? And how and where money gets invested or spent, if you will, is a separate set of discussions. They're interrelated, but let me give you an example. So if we if the board had a fiscal policy that says um, that because our because if you look, our budget has grown like over doubled in the last four to five years. I think when I took over, it's about a four million dollar budget. We're north of eight million now as treasurer. What I'm saying is if you say our fiscal policy for the board is going to be the superintendent has to operate such that. Um, on any fiscal year transition, there is a cushion of 60 days of operating expenses maintained within within the operating account. That's just the fiscal guideline policy. And the purpose of that is to help manage cash flow across those fiscal year transitions. Because if you remember, we had the year where we didn't know if the local funds were going to come in time or the state hadn't passed the budget. So we didn't know what the ADM was. And, and, and so it just it just gives you some protection against a fiscal year transition. That's just a guideline for fiscal operation. It, it's not about where do you spend money or how much do you, you know, where do you spend it? That's an example where I, I think we do need to work on. We, we've matured to the point where we can actually go work on some of those things as we should. And that's a that's an example. That, yeah, that's a that's a really good example. And I think when we get into new business and and start looking at the potential of setting up an ad hoc um, policy board policy committee, those are the kinds of policies that I think we can be reviewing and considering what looking at what we have, assessing that and moving forward. So that's a great example. OK, I'm uh, going to circle us back around. We have a motion on the table to approve moving $462,000 from the operating account to the reserve account. That motion um, has been seconded and we've had discussions. So all in favor, Robbie. Aye. Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay, wonderful. Motion carries. We'll be moving that money. Um, Benji, you uh, more from the Finance Committee? That is all. Thank okay, you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Um, I believe that underneath the new charter school logo on our on our agenda is the Facilities Committee. Uh, so, Robbie? 
So uh, Dr. Edwards has done an exceptional job, her and Josh, as far as this new uh, modular installation and all. That is the gist of our facility um, report for this time. So uh, thank you, Dr. Edwards and Josh and the school. Perfect. Thank you. So exciting to see those two new uh, modulars in place. Um, very, very, very happy. Grateful to all, to you, Robbie, to Dr. Edwards, to Josh, and to everyone who worked so hard to make sure that that happened. Um, so very, very exciting. Thank you for all that hard work. All right, moving on. Resource committee, Paul. Resource did not meet in September and Part of that was the reasoning of pending some of our further discussions based on our retreat. So, Perfect. Thank you so much. Michelle, Board Development Committee. Yes. So the um, couple of things. First, I'll kind of go over my report. Um, we met on September. The, we've met twice. We met on September the 14th and September the 21st. Um, at our September 14th meeting, we really went over and talked about the board retreat and kind of hashed out some of those things. It was a lot of information, um, I think, that we that we all got from the retreat. I hope that everyone found it beneficial. I know I did. Um, and I thought it was a, a great opportunity for us. And so I think, Jane, I think you put it very well when you said it was like drinking through a fire hose. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was a lot of information and overwhelming. So we were just kind of, we kind of talked about those things and, um, and keeping that ball, wanting to keep that ball rolling. I think, you know, we've got some momentum and just, you know, keep going in that right direction so that we don't settle back and relax into, um, into the ways that we are trying to get away from. <laughs> um, we did discuss the recommended revisions to the bylaws that were made by Dr. Carpenter. Um, and I believe all those were emailed to everyone, those comments. Um, so we talked about those and I also did reach out as Dr. Carpenter suggested to um, Hillsdale College and got a copy of their model bylaws. Um, and I have put that in the drive and I think I've also emailed that to everyone as well. So we are going to be looking at that, um, looking at the um, suggestions made by Dr. Carpenter. And we're going to actually meet on September the 29th at five o'clock for the very purpose of just reviewing the bylaws um, and start that process. Um, and I think Jane talked to Dr. Carpenter, and I think that, that was one of the very first things he said we needed to go ahead and work on. Um, as you know, there was a lot was, of. Sorry, it was his top recommendation to us as um, where we should start as a board. Yeah, so there was a, a lot of information out there and. Um, knowing, you know, where to start first. Um, and I think we, we've got to at least start and get going um, so we don't lose that momentum. So we're going to go ahead and get started on that September the 29th. Um, and we'll be making a recommendation to the board for suggested revisions. Um, hopefully very, very soon. Hopefully this won't take too long. Um, based on the comments and looking at the model bylaws, it looks like it might be a a lot of change. So if you are reviewing the model bylaws or the comments that were provided by Dr. Carpenter and have thoughts, suggestions, um, let me know. Um, one of the um, items that came up as well, and I will discuss it in new business, um, but just as part of our report, we met on the 21st to discuss the proposal by Dr. Carpenter for continued ongoing remote assistance. And um, I think I've emailed that proposal to everyone as well. And I think it's part of the board packet and it's also in our Google Drive. Um, and so that'll come up in under new business. Great. Thank you so much, Michelle. Does anybody have any questions or comments based on Michelle's report? I appreciate the work that that the board development committee is uh, doing and getting ready to, uh, especially in getting ready to take another look at the bylaws. I know um, we just revised those, but um, given what Dr. Carpenter said uh, and his strong recommendation that we revise them, um, I'm I'm grateful that the board development committee is doing is going to be doing that that work. And I know as you share things that we'll all be able to review them, you'll be, there's a, 
uh, bylaws folder in our board document shared drive now. So, um, Michelle, will you be able to um, post things in there at, as you go forward with that? Yes, I can do that. So what I can do is we're working on it. I can just work from a document within that folder. Perfect. That way anyone can take a look um, as as we go along and, and make any comments or, or um, ask any questions. So I appreciate that and look forward to your recommendation under new business. Um, I agree with you that I, I felt like the retreat was was very, very helpful, really informative. Um, I was impressed to have the sort of foremost expert on charter school boards um, take a full day and spend it with us. And, and he seemed just as excited to talk about charter school boards at, at nine, eight or nine hours in as he was the first thing in the morning. So he's definitely found his calling, I believe, but um, I'm excited and excited to take a look at some of the things under new business to see um, what kind of action steps we can take to really move, move the board in the direction that, that he recommended. So thank you for that. Um, last committee is strategic planning committee and our full committee did not meet in September. We were finishing up early in September our um, small groups that were working on um, beginning the work of the SWOT analysis. We were going to meet near the, um, you know, uh, at last week and decided as, as Paul did for the resource committee to pause the work of the, of the strategic planning committee while we take a look at the bylaws and consider making some committee board committee level changes. So um, we've paused the strategic planning committee for now. Okay, um, old business. I do not see anything under old business. Is there anything that anyone needs to bring to our attention? All right, new business. We've got a few things to discuss. Um, the first thing on the uh, on under new business is the remote assistance quote by Dr. Carpenter, Michelle. Did uh, you said the board development committee wanted to make a recommendation, correct? Let me unmute. Yes, so the board development committee met, uh, yes, yesterday was the 21st, yes, yesterday. Um, we met yesterday just to review everything. Um, we talked through the pros and the cons, um, and it was our recommendation that we. Um, move forward with the proposal. Um, and um, and I, Dr. Edwards, I hope it's okay. I did talk, ask Dr. Edwards kind of her input and she said that she fully supported it as well. Um, and, and that was one that I wanted to make sure of as well because I wanted her to feel like it was equally beneficial since that working relationship is gonna be important um, to her as well too. So um, the Board Development Committee does recommend moving forward with that proposal. Okay, um, do I have a motion to, uh, to approve the remote assistance quote uh, from Dr. Carpenter as shared by, the, by Michelle and the Board Development Committee? All right, make a motion to approve that, please. Great, uh, second. Booker, I second. Okay. Any uh, discussion, questions? Do we feel this is the best place to invest $12,000? So uh, Benji, I'll just kind of chime in on that because that was discussion that we had in the board development committee as well um, because of it was a, it was a sticker shock. Um, <laughs> I talked to Jane about it you know, individually, um, and then we discussed it amongst ourselves. We really, you know, we've said this before. Um, if the board is not successful, the school is not going to be successful. And we're putting, we're investing so much money in so many different places within the school, and we should, um, but we've never invested any to this extent in the board. Um, 
I think given the recommendations that were made that were made uh, by Dr. Carpenter, um, it is a lot of money. There's, I don't, I mean, that, I definitely agree on that, but I think it is an investment that will um, continue to help us along the way with the different items that we're going to have to tackle as we move forward. Um, oh, and I think it will benefit oh, not, and I think it'll benefit not just the board. I think there'll be some items I think Dr. Edwards is working on that will be beneficial her, to her as well. Um, One thing real quick, and then Paul, uh, I'll let you, I just uh, would like to remind everyone that maybe you, you might not remember from Dr. Carpenter's original proposal, but um, because we did our retreat virtually instead of in person, we actually paid about half of what he typically charges. I recognize that that um, that doesn't mean that we necessarily have an extra twelve thousand dollars sitting around, but I do want to say that I, I feel like um, we did save about thirty five hundred dollars, maybe even a little more than that, by doing that virtually rather than in person. And so, tip his typical fee at this point, we would have been double where we are, and considering a twelve thousand dollar investment um, rather than um, what we actually paid. So. To me, at least, I feel like that decision to do it virtually was a, a really good fiscal response, uh, fiscal decision in, in addition to just given COVID and where we are. So, Paul, what were you going to say? Sorry. Oh, no problem. Thank you. I, I was looking at it as an ongoing uh, opportunity in the next year to get further guidance. Um, as what put it in perspective to me is the cost of alternate uh, advisory work. And I guess the biggest cost I got to thinking about was the cost of air or, or a cost of a problem, how much that's, that's, uh, brought us down both in time and investment, uh, and opportunity, uh, in recent years. So, uh, I was able to swallow the, the cost and, and, and look ahead really and see the, the benefit. So that's my two cents on it. Why well, stand behind it? So, so one question, this is Robbie, one question. So is it all paid up front? You, it's sort of like buying a package or is it staged based on results? You pay it up front. And then if you don't use the full eight hours in that month, it rolls over to the next month. And, and I will say, um, sorry. And then Don, um, but I just to, to Robbie, that was a question that, um, the board development committee had and asked me and what I will say is that that's pretty standard in the type of consulting that uh, Dr. Carpenter does is to ask for a, you know, that you basically invest sort of a, a pot of money to draw down give, with a, a anticipated number of hours uh, per month. And then like I, like I told the board development committee, I would have been concerned if he said, if you don't use your eight hours each month, they go away. <laughs> um, but it, it's pretty typical that you pay in advance for consulting hours um, and then track those as you go and, and roll them over. So that that's a, a, a it is a bit of a sticker shock to pay it up front. But I just want to make sure everybody knows that in my experience as a consultant, that's how I always charged um, for coaching hours. I, I'm, I'm in full support of the um, consultant and his fee. I do think it's important that we um, work very hard to manage perceptions in our community. And so while this is an open meeting, you know, we may have five people, we may have 500 people, but it's not going to be everyone. And I think it's important that we share with the broader community what the work we're doing as a board and why this is important. Because you're gonna see some people who are like, they just spent a whole bunch of money on the consultant for hiring Dr. Edwards. Now they're just spending another bunch of money as on a consultant to do, you know, who knows what a person may make up. Um, we're in the middle of COVID, we're in the middle of a, and this may not seem like a priority to a parent who wants something or feels the money could be better spent. But to counter that, then we need to control the narrative and share with our community why the work of the board and using this consultant is so important so that they come along with us on this journey and not start making up their own 
stuff about you know what we're doing and how we're spending the school's money on ourselves and blah 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 blah. That is the only thing I would um, encourage us to do is to be proactive in in you know forming the narrative around what we're doing with the consultant, especially because ultimately it's going to feel a lot different to the people who work at News and maybe even to the families who come to News. If we do it right, it should feel different to them. Exactly. And and, and Don Don, are you recommending just a, a one-time communication or multiple communications? What what were you thinking of? Um, I think it could be multiple. I think it could be, you know, where, where Jane sets the stage that the, the board is working on, you know, being a reflective practitioner and seeking out guidance to, you know, um, make sure that we have policies in place that will put the, the institution and our new superintendent and the students that it serves in the best position to be successful, to grow and to, you know, make an impact in our community. And, um, you know, I mean, you could put a, a spin on it. It's not a bad thing. I think it's important for us to say there's work we have to do as a board. And we recognize that through some deep reflection and, and we are very serious about it and have, you know, contracted with someone to guide us through this. And then, you know, sometime in early spring, maybe, you know, talk about some of the things that we've already put into place. We, we have a new bylaws, you know, other things that we're doing and kind of give them an update. Absolutely. I think that's a yeah. great recommendation, Nicole. Yeah, Dawn, I, I totally agree with you because un unless, unless you're sitting in a chair, it's, you know, we, we need to give them the benefit of uh, our experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, I, from my perspective, I had a lot of sticker shock as well, but I think if we didn't do something in addition, we, we would be throwing away the investment of the retreat because I right. don't think that we could be successful with that one day retreat. It was wonderful information, but it was drinking from a fire hose. And, you know, most of us were and are, you know, you know, a little, uh, we need that professional development. And um, so, so I think a commu uh, communication strategy is, uh, is essential. I like Don. Okay. I like his books. Yeah. I'm reading the charter school board university one now I'm about halfway through it. I just feel like there's uh, you know, other stuff we can do to develop ourselves and to be better than we are currently um, at a lot cheaper price, a lot more cost effective and, I just think that this investment could be spent on the kids and on the on the teachers, on our staff, instead of on ourselves. At least at this point, there's still more we can do before we need this. Yeah. So I and, think. Um, let me say this. You know, I think you know, that is. Um, you know, we're not spending the money on ourselves. We're spending the money on the school. While the board is doing this work for the school, and this is. You know, it's not a situation where we're getting some the individually board members are getting some benefit from this. This is to contribute to the work of the school. Um, we're not paid staff of the school. We're not the superintendent, but we oversee the school. We oversee the superintendent and the work of the board is critical to the performance of the school. And so the money is being invested in the school while it is training for the board of directors. And, 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 and the only thing that I'll add to that, sorry, and then Nicole, you go ahead first. Um, what I was just going to add is, is Benji, I, I see your perspective and, and I see that's the first thing that is going to come out of the mouths of the parents and the teachers. But I think given our history and our turnover in administration, the board is lacking significantly. And I don't think you can blame our turnover on administration other than our, our, our board. I mean, what else? You know, I hate to be blunt. And so I think the school needs some investment in its governance and its leadership. And, you know, if we can convey sure. that to our stakeholders that it, it you know, it isn't a, it, it's more about educating us and relieving our ignorance. And I, I appreciate that, Nicole. Um, the, the only thing that I'll say is that Benji, I, I think that you're absolutely 100% right that there are other ways that we could get information that we could use to 
um, for board development. I think that, that there are definitely ways that we could do it more cheaply. My concern is that I believe that time is of the essence and that if we don't make some pretty big uh, changes sort of along the lines of what Nicole said um, pretty quickly, that I think that I think that this is a critical pivotal time at News Charter School and we have a brand new um, superintendent who has big goals and big plans for the school and I think that this board has dedication and we have um, people who are committed to the success of the school and to the success of Dr. Edwards and all of the administrators what we don't have is the is the nitty gritty down and dirty knowing how to do it the way that we should do it and to do it well and also to speak to what Paul said to to go you know to protect ourselves and the school and so to me that's why this investment mm -hmm. is worth the money because it is a way to ensure that we have the support that we need to get to the place that we need to be in as quick and efficient a way as possible because without that I feel like it could take us too long and we could maybe miss this moment in time where I feel like the momentum is with us and That's I'll my just personal take not as the chairs and and I'll just note that I think it we know it's a you know it's a sobering uh feeling that we need to take advantage of this opportunity with whatever services that we can get and walk through and, and commit to this training. I think it helps us in a lot of other areas too. Um, sticker shock for me, when I saw it first, uh, some things I didn't care for as far as the contract, but um, I just feel like overall, it I think really gets us where we want to go. Um, so. Don, you're muted. Just uh, quickly, Michelle, is there any room for negotiation? Do we like, can we reduce the hours and, and it's less or that's just, that's it and take it or leave it? Yeah, that's, that's it. Well, so I emailed him about that and asked him about, you know, maybe could we do six months? And I phrased it as if, um, you know, if, you know, financially we could not do it, could we reduce it to six months? And uh, his response back was pretty stark, pretty, um, if a school the size of News Charter School can't afford to do this, um, I don't remember his exact language, but you get the picture. The, okay. the other thing to keep in mind is that- I'm going to remember that as a consultant. I'm going to tell my father. No. <laughs> the other thing I to keep in mind- Sorry. Is I, and Dawn, let me say this too. The other thing too, and I, you know, he may have said this from a sales standpoint, but, um, but, and- I think the evidence lends itself in agreement with him, but yeah, he did say, um, you know, cause we talked about the doing, you know, if we did alternate hours or, you know, he felt like that with the work that was needed for us to do, that it would require more significant, consistent, ongoing, um, ongoing work as well. So, so shaming us into getting a contract. <laughs> Exactly. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, how can you not want to do it after, you know, he's like, God, you guys are a mess. So I mean, why, why would you do this? Uh, he, okay. he did give us some positive feedback about some things. So, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's better than closing the patient back up and sending him home, you know. So, this is true. Yeah. He didn't yeah. give us the black tag, right? That, like, right. Says, leave, it, leave it alone. There's nothing you can do. Um, right. But there right. is also, because we're within the 30 day window, there is a that 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 figure that we have as sticker shock is in, does include a discount. Is that correct, Michelle? I don't remember how much, but well, okay. Yes, that's great. I was trying to get my mute button oh, off. My mouse was not cooperating. Right. Yes. Um, so in the if you after thirty days, it's one hundred and seventy five dollars per hour. Within the first thirty days, one hundred twenty five dollars per hour. And I, and I will say that the. You know, again, in my experience doing this type of consulting, 125 is is less than I charge. <laughs> it's less than most 
charge. So it is true. I mean, 175 is is sort of a more accurate, typical price. Benji, were you going to add something? Sorry. No, I was just giving you the numbers. 175 an hour dropping down to 125. Thank you. Sorry. And Don, to answer, the, I make sure I'm clear with the answer and answer your question fully. Um, when you were asking about the less amount of hours. So mm -hmm. as far as packaging and the reduced cost goes, no, it's that is the 12 months, the 96 hours. Um, there is, you can do it a la carte, $175 per hour. Um, I figured it up with the $12,000 and it would be substantially less. I can't remember now the figure. I wrote it down. I don't know what I did with it, but um, significantly less number of hours than I think it was maybe 60 hours or something like that, um, as opposed to the 96 hours. Okay, so we, we as part of this, your second phase will be really to have a plan of util, utilization of these 96 hours, like what things go to him and, um, okay. I mean, I just, I mean, I don't, um, I think he's a great expert in all that. I, I just, for that level of, funding, I, I guess I'm expecting that he actually produces some work for us and not just, although consultants kind of just talk you through stuff, but also can produce some work for us. Um, so One thing that, I'm sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, I just meant just, you know, like getting our full 12 grand and it's mm -hmm. not just him, you know, pointing fingers and directing us to, to do things. I don't know. Yeah, so it's definitely we need to kind of we need to pick those specific things um, that we want to target um, and get his expertise on um, and also in and talk with Dr. Edwards as well, because, you know, he'll be, you know, part of some of the tasks that she's assigned with. I know um, maybe with the risk management, I believe, was a, a point that um, she needed some assistance with. So, um, you know, he'll also be there for that. There are even things about observing um, board meetings, doing um, micro trainings at some of the board meetings. Um, you know, I don't know that that's how we want to utilize our, you know, our time with him. We may want to focus more on our, you know, as we're developing policies, um, like moving I'm, forward. I'm sorry, excuse me. I was just wondering, could he record a training for staff on helping them to understand the difference between management and governance, what, what their board is there for? I like can certainly recorded, ask him. A recorded training for them. I don't know if it, you know, we could facilitate a live with so many staff, but. Mm -hmm. He might could maybe do something, a brief, um, something very brief, specific on that at one of our board meetings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that All right. Be recorded. Well, and I, but Dawn, I, I hear what you're saying and agree with you. I think it's really important that we um, direct um, you know, how and where we would like him to focus. And um, I think it'll be important that we try to think of the things that are going to be the most um, sort of efficient for his time and, and sort of give us the most bang for our buck. And, you know, like Michelle said, one of the things that he said he can do is watch a board meeting and make recommendations. Well, if he's going to watch one of our two and a half hour board meetings and charge us, um, you know, three hundred dollars, right. I'm not sure that that's the way, the way we want to spend the money. So, well, he, he, we could just send him a recording of a board meeting and he do an assessment on how exactly. it exactly. Yeah. So I think we need to get some more details, and I would like to. Um, you know, recommend potentially for the board development Michelle, um, to see oftentimes consultants will, will talk you through kind of what they can and can't do in more detail without sort of starting the clock um, in terms of the, the money. And I'm hopeful that, that that he would consider doing that with us so that we can kind of come up with a plan. I think it'll be important to include Dr. Edwards and and the board members, um, if there are specific things, you know, I think policies, fiscal policies in particular, um, and and looking at best practices for a board is is where you know I would like us to focus, but um, or ask him to help us focus on because I feel like those are things that he knows very well. 
but I, I want to make sure that the, the everybody feels like they got to uh, if we if we move forward with this, that everybody feels like they got to have a voice in in how we spend that money and what he helps us with. And that definitely includes Dr. Edwards. Yeah. And just a reminder that we, we reach out to Dr. Edwards and she supports the proposal. And she's nodding. <laughs> okay, good. He might have to up his game a little with the technology. I'm just going to be honest for 12 yeah. grand. He's yeah. going yeah. to have to, little, he's gonna have to come a little better with that. So I, I think he's aware of it and that's why he had his engineer. I'm wondering if perhaps he should select a different engineer. Next yeah, time. That, did it. That, that did it. I mean, I, I was trying not to drift and spend the whole time saying he should have did it this way. He should have did it this way to help him. But um, I, I just think for, for it to use our time wisely, because we can't sit there while he's trying to figure out stuff if we're, you know, spending 125 an hour. Exactly. Exactly. And I just, you know, Jane, let me say this to you. And I, you know, I don't, Coming out of that, out of the board retreat, I don't want, you know, the, obviously we have a lot of work to do um, as a board. Um, I don't want us to feel as though, you know, the, you know, the board has done something wrong or the, you know, we're not, you know, performing and that type of thing is, I don't think that's what it is. I think that it's over the years as the school has grown, um, and things have progressed, there are things that, that should be implemented and procedures that should be implemented that were not done, you know, years ago um, because maybe they weren't needed at that time. But the school school has grown. Um, and I think, you know, we now recognize that um, the board has to step up their game too. Well, I think some of it, Michelle, is that we need to operate under the premise that none of us on this call may be here in uh, two to three years. I mean, when, and I don't mean in a negative way, I'm just saying for succession planning and planning. I mean, I even realized in talking to Benji, we put some fiscal policy stuff, but there was still more that we should have done. Right. So if somebody just gets dropped in here tomorrow in any position or role, there's guidelines and, and operating procedures for us as a board that somebody can just take up and say, Hey, that's, it's a really well-run group because the most complimentary thing we'll ever be able to say is if somebody brought a board here tomorrow, the school would never miss a beat. So. Absolutely. I agree, Absolutely. Rodney. And, and I think that there are a lot of things, everything from onboarding new board members to, you know, making sure that everybody knows where everything is. Cause right now I think we even have some things that no, a lot of people don't know where to find um, policies and, and things like that. So I think tightening up a lot of that's really going to help, but that's, that's a, a really great point and, and a good goal for us to have Rodney. Any other questions, comments before we move forward on the motion, <clears throat> there is a motion on the table to approve the remote assistance quote from Dr. Carpenter. It has been seconded. So um, all in favor, Robbie? Yeah. Paul? Aye. Rodney? Aye. Dawn? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Benji? No. Michelle? Aye. Okay. Uh, and with that, the ayes have it and that uh, quote has been approved. So thank you, everyone. Okay. Um, the next sev the next four things on um, under new business, I will just direct you to um, as we go through these that all four of these um, have been put into the, I, they were emailed to everyone and they're in the board meeting uh, the board document share drive rather so if you want to refer to those as we um, go through here you should have access to them um, the first thing uh, that is on the list is the board a uh, board code of conduct um, which we don't currently have but is something that um, was strongly recommended by Dr. Carpenter during our uh, retreat and has been up for comment. Um, the original was 
just taken from the materials um, that Dr. Carpenter shared. There have been some changes made to that um, from board member comments uh, and the updated version is uh, in your shared drive. So uh, the recommendation from Dr. Carpenter is that the board have a code of conduct that is that is uh, signed off on by board members and followed by individual board members. So in order to have discussion, do I have a motion uh, to approve the board code of conduct as it is in the share drive right now? Booker, so moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All right. So discussion, any discussion, questions, thoughts, comments on the code of conduct as it is in the share drive right now. So Jane, I think Rodney has put in some additional comments. Oh, um, yeah. Okay. yeah. I, look, I, I, I apologize. I, I saw the email come through. I glanced at them before. I, I thought that they were being discussed this month and then for actually approval next month, I, I didn't catch the point. They were actually all comments were due to actually approve this month. So apology if I missed that. I'll just make a general comment then, you know, you can go through and look at some of the individual comments I made. I, I get a little concerned when we're trying to look at policy for something that, that we want to be able to enforce when there, there are subjective terms in there. I remember the discussion when we had the, I forgot which policy it was, Jane, here a while back that I remember uh -huh. about subjective terms like rude or there was another one in here. Um, like, or there was ones about like a personal friend. I, I don't, if I was in the person that having to enforce that policy, I don't know how I would do that. Like if I, if somebody comes up and says a complaint, well, Rodney was or Sally or whoever, right as a board member was doing something and it was, they were a personal friend. Well, it could just be that that person was just, they just knew that person and they just spoke to them politely. But is that a friend or not? Like, how do you quantify that? So there, there was a few, places in there where those kind of words were in the policy. And I could just imagine a, a board being in a position where they were trying to have to make that determination. And I don't see how you could ever do that. So I, I had a little bit of kind of concerns around a few of those uses of words in the, in the document. But like I said, I apologize because I didn't realize it was actually for vote this month. And, and whoops, my, okay, I'm not muted. Sorry. I lost track of whether I was or not. Um, and, and I apologize if I wasn't clear. I think moving forward in order for us to have a discussion in an, in a board meeting, we have to have a motion on the table um, because that's the appropriate way um, to do Robert's rules. Like you can't discuss something without having a motion on the table is my understanding. Um, so apologies if that, I, I apologize if that, if that wasn't clear. Um, certainly we, we can always table a motion or table discussion if, if that's what everyone would prefer, but in order to, to have the discussion, I think we have to have a motion on the table. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and Rodney, I agree with you. That's the reason I motion. I think some of the language is ambiguous and I would like to either get a definition section or to, um, and, and I have it take taking the opportunity to really work on it as I should to to make the terms more a little more concrete. Oh, okay. okay. So okay. yeah, I, by the way, I, I think it's a great start. I think it's something we've needed for a long time. So it's good. So I would say, you know, um however what's the parliamentary procedure, but I would I would table this and make a motion to table this one until the next meeting for pending further feedback. My oh, um and so either Paul or Michelle, you need to help me with the parliamentary <laughs> procedure on this part. I think that do we make, does he make a motion to table it or do we, is that the right, is that the right thing to do, Paul? Well, you're may, I, I can consult, but I, I'll believe that he can, you can make a motion. It's been presented. A motion has not been made on it. Uh, you know, he can, he can make that motion. Uh, and it, <coughs> forward with a second um what, because nicole, i don't because i don't believe made a motion nicole made a motion to to approve it 
as it as it is. And, and I second it. So there's so, so you have to have an initial motion. We, we we have to vote on it. Oh, right. yeah. We don't we have, have to vote on it. We can postpone. We, we can yeah. think we can. What? Yes. So according to the um, Robert's Rules of Order in brief, um, if if you don't mind me reading from this, I'll I'll be. You go ahead. That okay. Would be helpful. Okay, so um, suppose that you are in the middle of a debate on a main motion and you want to put off taking a vote on it. Perhaps it is a matter that is not urgent and you want to take up something which is. Perhaps you feel more information is needed and want time to gather it before making a decision. There could be a hundred reasons why you might want to stop dealing with a proposal for the time being and put it off until another occasion. The motion to postpone to a certain time meets this need. If adopted by a majority vote, it puts off further consideration of the main motion to a later time or meeting named in the motion. For example, I move to postpone the motion until 3 p.m. Or I move to postpone the motion to the next meeting. In this case, it will come up right after unfinished business at the next meeting. After a motion to postpone it to a certain time has been stated, it may itself be amended, for example, to change the time to which the main motion is to be postponed. It is also debatable, but the debate must be limited to the motion to postpone. This means you may talk about whether it is, is or is not a good idea to postpone the main motion or about the details of the post postponement, such as for how long it should be. However, you may not debate whether the main motion is good or bad. In the ordinary circumstance, you cannot postpone a motion beyond the next regular meeting and not beyond the third month after the present month. For example, at a meeting in February, a motion can't be postponed to a meeting later than in May, even if that is the next regular meeting. Great. Okay, so I, I think that that's what we want to do. Can we hold up one second, Rodney? I'm going to then give you the floor. Um, I would say that um, you said under unfinished business, which is one of the things that would be in um, when we start, when we look at the new agenda format, that's one of the recommendations is to change old business to unfinished business. Um, so my understanding is that in place of where old businesses will have unfinished business potentially moving forward, and it's something like this that has been postponed, will will show up there. Um, really quickly, just um, I think as we start to to use these, um, you, you know, use this, these parliamentary procedures better and to, in, you know, to allow us to have sort of to do work in between board meetings and everything. Um, I will work to be clear, more clear in my, in my communications to everyone um, when I'm, you know, when I'm hoping to have a vote on things because I, I obviously I wasn't uh, clear enough on that. But I also think that we as a board will need to just sort of get used to the rhythm of having things to review in between board meetings and trying to get those out in a timely fashion so that people have an opportunity to contribute, make comments, do all of those things. And then um, that will should hopefully make things more efficient during the actual meetings. Um, OK. Thank you, Michelle, for the parliamentary um, explanation. Rodney, the lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the short lesson. lesson. Thank you. Rodney, would you like to make uh, your motion again? I would like to make a motion that we postpone the current um, motion to the October board meeting. Is there a second? This is Robbie. I'll second that. Perfect. Okay. Any discussion on the postponement of the original motion? Hearing none, um, I all in, in favor of postponing this motion until the October meeting. Robbie. Aye. Aye. Rodney. Paul. Don. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Benji? No. Aye. Michelle? The ayes have Aye. it. Uh, this top, this uh, code of conduct and the motion on it will be uh, postponed until our October meeting. Thank you for that. Madam Secretary, have you got that to carry forward? <laughs> Uh, 
sorry, hold on. And what I would, what do I need to do to carry it forward <laughs> other than to document it? <laughs> Just make yes. it on the agenda. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Add yeah. it to the agenda. All right. Vote on that motion. Vote in discussion. Will okay. Be. All right. Back to new business. Um, and we may be doing this frequently and that's okay um, as we go through these. So the next thing under mm -hmm. new business is the board draft of the board mission statement, mm -hmm. which also was um, rec a recommendation from Dr. Carpenter Um the recommendation was that we not only adopt that, but that much like we um, read the ethics statement at the beginning of board meetings, that we read the mission statement at the beginning of the board meeting as a way to remind ourselves and our community and stakeholders um, what the board's mission and responsibilities are. So, um, again, in order to have discussion, uh, do I have a motion uh, to uh, adopt the board mission statement as uh, drafted? So, Jane, this is Michelle. I move that we adopt the New Charter School Board of Directors mission statement as presented. Is there a second? Second. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, discussion. Thoughts, questions, concerns. This one's a lot shorter than the code of conduct. So the, the basic gist of it is that this is a way for us to talk about what that we are providing oversight. I mean, it's literally two sentences. If you don't have it in front of you, it says the mission of the new charter school board is to provide oversight of school management in a transparent manner without participating in the management of the school. We will focus our work on ensuring that number one, the school accomplishes the student outcomes we were chartered to produce. And number two, that the school operates at all times within all required parameters. As someone who hates mission statements, I love this mission statement. Yay! <laughs> I can't take credit for it. It was it was pretty much what Dr. Carpenter recommended, but I like it that it's that it's brief. Is that what you like about it, <laughs> Nicole? Yes, uh, I agree. It's brief. No Dilbert statements in it either. Yep. Thoughts, concerns. I think you can call for the vote. All right. Uh, all in favor of adopting the News Charter School Board of Directors mission statement as written. Uh, Rob. Uh, Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Great. The ayes have it. The mission statement has been adopted. Um, and I look forward to um, us being able to refer not only ourselves, but our community back to that. I think that'll be a really good um, way for us to guide what the board does moving forward. Okay. Uh, the next thing under new business is another draft. This is the draft uh, board fundraising policy. It is um, not quite as long as the code of conduct, a little bit longer than the uh, mission statement. And this again is that these, the two policies, this one and the next one we're getting ready to talk about are um, policies that again, Dr. Carpenter strongly recommended to allow um, for us to stop, you know, um, break, make a very clean break between co-managing the school and uh, governing or, or providing oversight for it. Um, so in order to discuss it, do I have a motion to adopt the News Charter School Board of Director fundraising policy? So moved. Uh, second. Uh, I'll second it, Ron. Okay. okay, great. All right, comments, questions, thoughts? Does anyone need me to read it? It's about three or four sentences. If you don't have, or does everyone have it in front of them? Jane, does this include the, um, I could, 
does this include the um, suggestions that I had to put? I don't see my suggestions up there. Does this already, are they already accepted in there? Um, I believe you know? so. I think Brad accepted okay. all of the suggestions bef in order to put them in the shared drive. Okay. Okay. I'll read it just to be, just um, so that uh, if anyone uh, doesn't have it in front of them. It is the policy of the new charter school board that the NCS superintendent has authority over all fundraising activities, including all plans, decisions, communications, and implementation, and that all groups, organizations, and individuals who fundraise on behalf of NCS, its students, faculty, staff, administration, teams, clubs, or any other NCS stakeholders shall not plan, implement, or communicate any fundraising activity, including the solicitation of gifts without prior approval from the superintendent. That was a really long sentence. All funds raised by any and all fundraising activity on behalf of NCS shall be under the purview of the superintendent. The superintendent shall create and maintain appropriate procedures to implement this policy and exercise authority over all NCS fundraising activities. Yeah, that is not the draft that I see in it's not? my shared drive. Am, uh -oh. am I the only one? That's just I'm not, not what I see. I was in the shared drive, and that's exactly what she just read. It is? It is? Okay. You might need to refresh, Nicole. If okay. If you got into it ahead of time, if you yes, look at I it, would. sometimes you have to refresh for the changes to take effect. Okay. Anybody else not seeing the same thing that I read? Okay. Can, yep. Uh, there we go. Okay. Can Dawn? I ask? Is it this does not um, explicitly spell this out? But is is the intention of this policy that therefore all fundraising monies flow through the school? It does actually. I think say that in that oh. um, it says she has that the superintendent in this case, Dr. Edwards. Um, has authority over all activities in, um, uh, right, including plans, decisions, communications, implementation, and that all funds raised by any and all fundraising activity on behalf of NCS shall be under the purview of the superintendent. Oh, okay. I knew it was in there. I just had to find it. <laughs> well, well, I, I think to, to answer your question, I think the question explicitly on the policy, well, that statement as written doesn't dictate exactly what you said. You know, being under pur the purview, what you stated would follow in the last sentence, and the superintendent shall create and maintain appropriate procedures to implement this policy and exercise authority over all NCS fundraising activities. The actual operational details of uh, how that is managed would have to be clarified in a separate policy. Okay. I, I mean, I'll give you an example, right? I, I say I'm going to go, you know, uh, solicit my neighbor down the street to give NCS like three thousand dollars because I, I know they said it's really good. I, I don't have authority. I, I go put the money in a bank account and then just say, "Hey, I've got three thousand dollars." I mean, there, there, she would have to the superintendent would have to come up with the policies that said in the event, those activities, how, like, how would that money be handled? Would they write them a check? Would they bring cash in? Th those are the op operational details of, of the policy that would have to be crafted. Assuming she gave you permission to go ask your neighbor for 3000. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. So she, she has to figure out how to implement it, which is in the last sentence. And that's what you, that's really what the, what you're talking about. But in terms of the authority over all of the fundraising, um, all the funds raised, this gives her authority over all of those funds raised. And, and, um, and then the mechanism by which those decisions are made by determining the fundraising activities and all of that, that's what is at the operational level is what you're saying, Rodney, right? Yeah, well, I'll give an example. I remember a couple years ago, there was a scenario where, I don't remember exactly what it was associated with, but we, we were, the school was going to have to handle some money um, as part of an activity we engaged in. And so there was some discussion at the time from a managing that money. The money didn't come to us. It was actually, we were a pass-through entity. 
should we set up a different bank account or was it going to flow through the school's bank account or whatever? And, and there was no policy and how that was supposed to be handled. And after it came back up and we looked back at it, we really put the school in a position of not the fiscal oversight and controls that they should have had because that, that money went into a created bank account. Um, now it was oversight. It's all above water, but we just posed those questions about those things will come up over time. It could be banned or robotics in a particular event as part of their association. And they're chartered for that year to be the representation for a conference or whatever. And they're going to get some money and how do they handle that? Right. That, that's an example. Um, so that's going to have to be clarified in those policies. Right. So, yeah, the actual so let, process. Sorry, Robbie, go ahead. That's okay. So let me get clarity on this. So um, I, I know in the past, and I'm just talking about from experience, I've seen situations where, say, for like Rodney's talking about, for for the new gym, for instance, um, there was someone that was willing to give, say, $10,000 to put up padding for the new gym. That would no longer be approved until the superintendent actually said, yes, it's okay to take this money and utilize it for this reason. Am I correct? That's correct. Yeah. So this, is, so that would be like a directed giving um, policy that yep. would like Robbie, that Rodney was talking about um, that yep. she would have. Right. Yeah. So basically the, what this policy does is it says that the responsibility for fundraising falls under this purview of the superintendent. And so, and and then, at, like Rodney said, and to Don's question, then the expectation is that Dr. Edwards ha creates a plan <laughs> for what that looks like, okay. you know, in terms of operational. That, that's just a change. Yeah, yeah, it's a big change, uh, mind shift for um, the school. So Absolutely. as long as everyone's aware. Absolutely. I, I think one of the things to, to this one, a little bit to Robbie's point there, um, I, I just... I think there needs to be a uh, this. There needs to be a little bit of thought put through about how this gets communicated to parents specifically, because look, sometimes they do they're doing things in the best of intent. They really are a they're they're down the street and somebody's giving. Oh, I work at this. Oh, you know, I, you know, somebody says, oh, well, I, I donate something, or whatever, and they're just like, we don't want to start slapping people in the hands saying, hey, you're stepping outside the policy. There's probably going to be a little bit of you know, stakeholder awareness as this works its way through implementation, I think. Absolutely. And there has to be nuance also, right? Like we, we certainly would never want to do anything to discourage people from giving to, to news. We would never want to make it seem like we don't appreciate people who want to give, whether that's $5 or $500 or if somebody's out there and wants to give us $50,000, right? Like, I, I think that I think that what we have to do is is communicate the reasoning behind this, and and a lot of that has to do with donor fatigue. That if we if we don't have an overarching plan and um, for fundraising as a school, at, uh, uh, you know, as a, a complete fundraising plan, I think it's really easy for people to feel like they're being sort of asked multiple places multiple times by a variety of groups but also i think to get back to kind of where we were when we were talking about um our savings and what our what our long-term goals are if we're going to expect our superintendent to take the lead on um creating a plan a fiscal plan a, a long-term goals and all of those things, we have to also, in my opinion, allow that person to have take the lead on fundraising, which is one one of hopefully it, moving forward one of the most important ways that we can fund the things that we think are our priorities and our goals. And and if our superintendent is the one setting those goals and the, both operational goals and fiscal goals then to me, it, it seems only fair that she's also the one that gets to decide how the fundraising runs and what happens with those funds. Um, and so this to me is more about, about creating an environment for our superintendent to be successful than anything else. It, it, to me, it's not even really about, 
it, it's not about the fact that we've necessarily done anything wrong as much as it is that moving forward, we want to make sure that we give our superintendent every opportunity to be successful. One, one thing I don't think anyone's arguing that or the merits of the policy, and I'm sure Dr. Edwards, what you know, I would think she would expect from us as we as we help the school turn the corner is supporting the policy by, um, and yes, there's probably going to be people who, you know, as we keep saying, things are going to feel much different to a lot of people and they are going to have a difficult time with that. And I think if we have one role as a board, we, we as board members are probably going to have a difficult time with some things that, you know, Dr. Carpenter is going to, you know, guide us through, but that we, in our messaging, have to say to those people who are going to feel like this is, you know, kind of uh, slapping their hand or whatever, our messaging to them is that it will be okay. This is a, a great policy that is going to support our fundraising efforts in a, in a bigger scope. And there's going to be a pain point for them because they, as Robbie said, they're used to, you know, doing things differently. And so our job, I think, is to guide them through that pain point and, and, and support Dr. Edwards, like literally support her by our messaging being that we support this policy, end of story. And so that may be difficult, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure, you know, there's different conversations out there, but nothing's gonna derail all of these things if we do not um, support her by supporting the messaging of the policy. Uh, absolutely. I think that that's that that's really important. And it's really important that we that we present a united front on that as well. Rodney, were you going to say something? Sorry. Just just one thing. And I this kind of blurs the line between the actual policies that need to be implemented. One of the things that I had reviewed uh, before was when it when it comes to things like the scale of of whether it's directed giving or whatever it is i had read a policy in one place where they, they just put some bounds around it where, where for example if somebody's going to uh, i'll fire for fact if somebody's going to come and give us a million dollars if we paint the school you know you know red white and purple and we do all these other things you know does the board feel there needs to be some guidelines that say at some point of either financial obligation or facilities impact or whatever that that would have to get board approval? I, I think in the policy I read, it was like anything over twenty five thousand dollars that would require a multi year obligation of the school. I mean, there or do we expect those kind of details to be? ironed out in the policy she needs to come up with to execute under what we're writing. Um, she, she, she doesn't, I don't, I, this is a board policy. I'm just, this is just my opinion. So I'm not sure if Dr. Edwards needs to create other policies layered under this board. She needs to create the procedures and the forms and the process yeah. for that because the policy is already in place. And if she wants to suggest a, de a, a specific delegation that she feels requires board approval. I mean, even in her procedures, I'm sure she'll, you know, figure out how to vet people who want to give money and all and all of those sorts of things. So, um, and, you know, personally, I think she can just come with us with the good news of who's giving money. I mean, I don't think there is an approval. I don't think we need to have an approval for a certain okay. amount. Um, unless she, you know, if someone wants to do something crazy, then that's her job to d d decide whether that. Yeah. The reason I, yeah, the reason I bring that up, Dawn, is, is that discussion is along the same vein of within the fiscal policy. You know, the superintendent has to get approval for the board from a fiscal perspective. If it's over two or five thousand dollars, whichever one was changed. That, that was a discussion we had before, right, is where. Her spending, yeah. you mean? Is that what you're saying? That's right. right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay. It's just the point I wanted to, to bring up because as written, um, you know, they could agree to anything in, at any amount 
right, with without board approval. I mean, well, so this, again, uh, there's, judgment, there's judgment in there. So it's just a, a matter of do you want, want to bound the, the judgment around that? That's all it is. So like, you know, I could see and this has happened at schools where the principal or the superintendent makes a deal to bring in certain vending machines that are not perhaps that the board would maybe not support having certain vending machines at the school, but it's a very lucrative deal. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think in, in those situations, there's always a conversation. I don't know if we need to say you need formal approval, but I would imagine, you, you know, you would be coming and saying, hey, this is an opportunity. What do you all think? Okay. Okay. So, Don, yeah. I'm wondering in those types of situations if there would be um, like a, a contract involved that would require board involvement in those types sometimes of situations. Sometimes and sometimes not. I mean, companies are very savvy and you have a targeted market in a, in a school environment. And so there's a lot of free stuff they're willing to do to get their product in certain places. A lot of companies give you you know, free, at the beginning of the school year, give you free deodorant, shampoo, all these things to, to give out to your student students. And so sometimes it's good and sometimes it's questionable. So I don't, I mean, I've never seen it. Things just sometimes just show up at JCC, boxes of stuff, because they want us to distribute to students. There's no contract. They just, they, they are just offering something. So I understand some of the points that were made because I don't, and, and this is, uh, these are areas I don't think we would go into based on good sense. You would not want to obligate the school for uh, a number of years. Uh, you would not want to do anything that changed the facility without, uh, you know, working with the owner of the facility. That that's, that's the only thing I get into there that maybe we just need to make sure that there's nothing that we've got very broad that directly goes back up to us to make a decision that is within our aegis. That's all. So it's, it's just a matter of vetting that and looking at all those different, but I, I, I get what you're saying. If it's just a, a basic deal, but um, I, I've seen some of those kinds of exceptions work before in organizations where there's a certain amount or a certain amount of, um, of commitment. Uh, over a number of years or beyond a, uh, a dollar amount. But um, nevertheless, I, I support what's in front of us tonight. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing to always look at is if there's something that requires a matching donation from the institution, because then that's money you, and there's a lot of situations where, yes, we'll give you 25,000, but you have to commit to raising 25,000. And so um, those are the ones that I think get a little, you know, when you're tying in some kind of, but I think that would go back to, because that's almost like a spend. So I think that would go back mm -hmm. to the delegate, you know, kind of the delegation that's already in place if you're committing right. the school to something. So I don't know if that, if we need to clarify that anymore. I don't know. I think, I think you're, I think you're good on that. And the other thing, I would get into is anything that had any kind of special maintenance contract where we had, again, that's an expenditure of our money mm -hmm. where we would have to approve the school's money to fund the ongoing maintenance of something or a service contract of a, something that was given to us. Yeah, you remember Paul, when we met with the Johnston Health Group, I mean, at this point, it came up explicitly where they had to put some bounds around mm -hmm. you know, directly givens because what they found was it was almost like becoming special interest groups through directed giving for their institution mm -hmm. where they, they had the overhead to manage, say a trust a trust fund or something like that. But right. when they actually looked at money with what they were serving with their customers, whatever, they would literally almost like never be able to spend the money. They'd never be able to use mm -hmm. them, um, you know, because it was such a corner case. But anyway, I think we've beat that horse to death a little bit. I, I think we all agree that that's something we would watch for. We, we may have to come back and revise this in the future if we feel like it needs to be tightened up in that area a little bit. But for now, I think we've at least we're aware of it. Something to watch for. Perfect. Perfect. And I see this, Jane, I see this more as, you know, not as, you know, I, I think everybody kind of agrees 
this is a positive thing. Um, messaging is important. Um, some people may look at this as an interference. I don't see this as a, I just want to be clear that the purpose of this, at least in my view, is that this is not an interference with any one particular group's ability to fundraise. This is more so to create a coordinated effort so that from a broad perspective um, and broad scope of our fundraising activities at the school. And I really do think that overall it will actually benefit all of the groups because there will be more of a coordinated effort and you don't have people pulling the opposite direction at the same time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that, that's, that's, a, that's great mess you know, common message that we can all say um, that it's not an inner, it's not designed to be an interference in your, fundraising, but a coordinated effort, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I think moving forward, um, Dr. Edwards will put out, um, you know, messaging about how she is wants to approach that and work with the groups and, and come up with sort of an overarching plan. So very, all very good points. Any other thoughts or questions before we move forward with the vote? There's a motion on the table. <laughs> Okay, there's the motion. Uh, there's been a motion to accept the board fundraising policy as written and it's been seconded. So, all in favor, Robbie? Aye. Paul? Aye. Rodney? Aye. Dawn? Aye. Nicole? Aye. Benji? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And the ayes have it. Um, the News Charter School Board of Director fundraising policy has been adopted. Okay, the next one, um, which is uh, the board fundraising group certification policy that goes um, hand in hand with this one. Again, this is in your share drive for those of you who are looking. Um, this is also a policy that was uh, strongly recommended by Dr. Carpenter. Um, in order to have discussion, could I get a motion to approve this policy? So moved. Can I get a second? Second. Okay, so discussion, um, and as I did on the others, I'll just read this because it's not um, very long and then we can have discussion. Uh, it is the policy of the News Charter School Board that all groups, organizations, and individuals who fundraise on behalf of News Charter School, its students, faculty, staff, administration, teams, clubs, or any other NCS stakeholders shall be certified annually by the Board of Directors. In order to be certified, all such groups, organizations, and individuals will agree in writing to follow the NCS Board of Directors fundraising policy uh, and to allow the Board of Directors to annually or as often as necessary review its financial books and IRS Form 990 if applicable. Uncertified groups will not be allowed to participate in any fundraising activity on behalf of News Charter School. Um, and just as uh, uh, just to clarify, um, the IRS Form 990 is for um, my understanding is that it is for um, 501. The 50. Why is it? Why can I not remember this? 501c3. 50. Is that right? 501c3. 501 yeah, that they have to um, submit an IRS Form 990, um, and. There was one other thing I was going to say, um, to clarify. I can't remember what it was now. Um, thoughts, questions, concerns, comments. Can this, does it have to be a group, a formal group, or could it be an individual or, or what is this? So the way that it's written is groups, organizations, and individuals who fundraise on behalf of News Charter School. Um, it, that you know, and that they would need to be certified. I think that, oh, I know what I was going to say, that the, the agreeing and writing to follow the board fundraising policy is the policy that we just approved, right? So I think basically my understanding from the way that it's written is 
that anyone who wanted to fundraise would have to agree to follow the fundraising policy. In other words, they would have to agree that our superintendent um, that, you know, that they have to get approval from the superintendent for fundraising activities and that whatever funds they raise um, would be, would come under the authority of the superintendent for how they are spent. Um, and so that's my understanding of how it's written, but I'm, I'm not a lawyer. So, um, well, how, how did, I mean, this could be a lot of, um, I guess I'm just thinking of the <coughs> of this? Is this mm -hmm. like an online form? Is this going to be, who's going to be certifying these people all the time or groups? Like how, how does the board do that? Technically? Just so you don't, I think, I, I'm, I wonder if, is what you're saying is in the title of the policy, it says group certification policy is, mm -hmm. is the mindset that that word means once a year, the superintendent would bring forth, hey, here's all the list of stuff as a group and it, we would do it. So is that word confusing in the title? Is that what you're asking? No, what I'm confused as is what is the actual procedure? What, what is the procedure to certify? Is this, do they send it to Melissa and then she brings everything? Or I mean, is this gonna be every board meeting we have two more individuals who wanna be certified to fundraise? No, I think that again, the operationalization operationalization of this would um, would be under Dr. Edwards' purview. But the idea, I think, is what Rodney was saying, which is that once a year, the superintendent would bring forward these are these are the groups or individuals that have been um, certified for um, that you know that and that we would approve those. Um, I'm, my guess is that with everything else, uh, Dr. Edwards is switching over to a sort of electronic format that it probably wouldn't be too difficult to even have a place um, like on, on our website or something where people could go and, and do the sort of the, you know, sign the document that says that they would adhere to the fundraising policy, which would then, you know, flag them for Dr. Edwards that they want to fundraise. But I, I don't want to, again, I don't want to get too far down into the weeds because I think that's something that, that she could, um, you know, take the lead on. From our perspective, I think all that the board is doing is saying, we want to be able to annually certify groups that yes, they have basically the boards uh, and the school's stamp of approval to do fundraising for the school because they have agreed to follow the fundraising policy. And it also gives us the ability, the board, the ability to review any financial information, again, in under what we've been talking about, that oversight function that we have. Yeah, I'm fine. So if someone does not meet the deadline for the annual review, they cannot fundraise if they haven't been certified, if they miss whatever. Sorry, Siri was talking to you. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so I think that that's something that we can talk about, whether we do uh, it, it um, like retrospectively that these are the groups that have been certified throughout the year. And th so these, you know, that, that we are approving them moving forward, or I more likely, I think what you're saying is that we would give people a time that they would need to get certified to do fundraising activities. My guess is that that's what would be necessary because Again, I think when Dr. Edwards puts together her fundraising plan for the year, my guess is that that will include like a fundraising calendar, for example, and that if people want to be able to fundraise for that for that school year, they would need to put forth, you know, talk to her about getting on the fundraising calendar, right? So again, okay. I, I don't want to get too far down into the weeds, but yes, I think that you're right that there would probably be a deadline for this school year. It doesn't mean they could never fundraise. It just might mean that they don't, they aren't on the calendar or whatever there is. They're not in the plan for this year. And, and, and to also be a part of our oversight calendar, you know, our, our systematic oversight calendar, that would be one of, one of exactly. the, uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Does that answer okay. your question, Don? Yeah, I'm fine with that. It just sound the, the way you read it, it just sounds like it was more a process that we owned, you know, either collecting the certifications or the forms or whatever. But if that if that's not, that's that's fine. Well, but that's how it reads though. That's how it reads, yeah. Yeah. So you know, whether, our, whether we, um, whether we, I mean, first of all, you can't get in the weeds and say this is Melissa's when it's a board policy. Okay. So for procedures, then then that's something that the board decides how this, the procedures are going to be for it. Right. So if we say that annually, people, you know groups need to need to basically agree in writing to follow the fundraising policy and to make their their uh financial books available to us if we want i think that's the only part that we would be responsible for right would be the annually we put you know whether the board does it or dr edwards does it i think is something that can you know that that can be decided but if we need to, as the board, if it's written this way and we decide to do it this way, we could put out a, a time window where by X yeah. board meeting, anyone who wants to do fundraising needs to, you know, complete the sort of the, the written documentation. Well, but yeah. my, sorry, my guess is that it would be, it would make more sense for it to flow through Dr. Edwards' fundraising um, calendar or, or plan or whatever. Go ahead, Don. That's why I, all I'm saying is that this, re, that requires a procedure. And so that, that needs to be added. However, that gets added, then that's fine. Um, but there, there has to be a procedure with that, with that policy. That makes, should sense. it be in the policy who develops? I mean, the it, can, it, it can be, I mean, sometimes you have then the proceed like if it's a form then the forms attached to the policy like you have a package of everything what the policy is how the poly policy gets executed in whatever documents that go with the policy just so it's all together and if someone's looking at the policy they know everything they need to know about that particular policy so, so should it be in the policy who should write the procedure all I'm saying is we we are doing board policies, and so the board should direct what the procedure is. If that could be in conjunction with Dr. Edwards, if you want her to do certain things, but you don't typically wouldn't just say here's a board policy and then somebody else takes care of all you know the ins and outs of it because mm -hmm. anything so, so that changes with that policy has to come back to the board. If you all are saying these are board level policies. Is it, I think this is a good one where the lines blur a little bit. It, would it be sufficient to say that we should maybe amend this policy a little bit to say something along the lines of it is the policy news charge board director that um, that all group organizations and individuals who fundraise on behalf of the charter school blah 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 shall be certified annually. Something say it where this is the superintendent is it's a requirement that the superintendent bring forth um, those that have to be certified by some I don't know make it up, August fifteenth of each calendar year. I mean it's just saying that it's this policy statement you have to be certified and it has to be carried out and brought to us as in a group. It, I, by yeah. a certain day. I'm, 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 yeah, however we need to tweak it. We don't have to necessarily word with Smith it. What I don't want us to do is to create a policy that's created some work. So if somebody has an issue with the policy, they're not going to Melissa, they're going to the board because it is a board policy. So I'm trying yeah. to say, maybe we want to not have the, you know, the logistics of this under the board. Um, and, you know, much like the fundraising policy where we clearly say, it's Melissa's job, you know, and honestly, she's probably going to vet the certification anyway. So let her, do we need to just let her, um, you know, handle that procedure? Yeah, I, That was my point is that the previous policy 
left the procedure up to Dr. Edward, Edward. I amend this policy um, to, you know, have, have that same kind of verbiage. Um, right. Right. That, and that makes, and that makes sense, right? That she would do the certification and then like, like what Rodney was describing, just bring it to the board for approval. Um, and, and really, I think that's a way to show that the, that the board is sort of signing off on the fundraising plan and groups and all of that. But, okay, so um, do we want, do, do, let me know, does somebody want to make a motion to postpone this so that we can work on the language in this? to postpone because we have an open motion on the table that um, was a motion to approve this as it's written. I'd like to make a motion we postpone, postpone this one to the October board meeting. Okay, second. Second. Okay, all in favor of postponing um, the discussion and vote on the board of directors fundraising group certification policy until our October board meeting. Robbie? Uh. Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay, so the ayes have it. So that will also be that and the code of conduct will be under unfinished business in the October um, in the October meeting that both of those will continue to live in the um, shared drive. So feel free to go in and make uh, suggestions. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I said this in the email, but in Google Docs, if you're not familiar with it on the top right, there's a it defaults to editing, which means you'll just change it and no one will notice that we'll be able to see, track the different changes. If you click the drop down beside editing, you can select suggesting and then we'll all be able to see the suggestions. So I think most people know that, but Google Docs is just slightly different than Word. Okay, moving on to the next new business item. The next new business item is a discussion on a new agenda format. Um, again, this is something that was uh, recommended by uh, Dr. Carpenter and uh, Nicole. Um, is there uh, did is the new agenda format was that in the in the shared drive or did you just want to talk about it? Where are we? It what are your it, it is and I didn't okay. get it. I apologize. I didn't get it in, in there until the last minute. Okay. Um. Okay. So you may not have. Let me see if I see it. You may have not had an opportunity to review it. There's not a lot of change. Um. Where is it? I'm looking as well. Okay, hold on. Just... Uh, meeting minutes. Oh, no, I see regular. I see meeting minutes. Well, I thought it was in there. Maybe it's not. Um, I just want to upload it. Up. Did you? Um, I'm going to look in the other shared drive just to see. Okay. I can share it with you. Okay. Do you like? Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Or share your screen if you have it. Yeah, that's what I was going to try to oh, do. Okay, perfect. Yep. That'd be great. And, and this, yeah, go ahead. Uh, while we wait, are we, how are we um, cataloging these um, policies? Are we numbering them or what, what, how are anything like that? Um, at this moment, we do not have a plan for that, but in a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about potentially creating an ad hoc board policy committee to address some of those issues. Okay. We have a policy on policies. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, but I, but I get I, I totally agree with what Dawn's saying. Is it's just a matter we need to just keep up with them at least have a temporary number or something. Yeah, 
I, I okay. be prepared to be nominated, the two of you, for the ad hoc policy committee. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna do okay, it. Go all right. Um, if you'll just look at the shared screen, it's it's not that different. It's exactly as Dr. Carpenter suggested. I may have left a few things off that weren't applicable to us. Um, the only the additions are a guest disclosure, and I, I think that's appropriate. You know, announcing your guest at the beginning of the meeting. Um, and what he talked about was it's really important to read any correspondence from our authorizer, and in this case, is you know, Department of Public Construction or possibly the Department of Charter Schools um, discuss the superintendent's report and always include changes in enrollment. And I think we do that. I um, including standing committees as we are pr potentially proposing our committees to look like, um, which would if, if we did everything he suggested, it would only be finance facilities and board development. And he talked about in fin finance, um, you know, to conform to, uh, uh, you know, basic accounting, um, I guess, accepted practices to include a balance sheet and an income statement. And in board development, to always discuss development and self-assessment. He liked calling um, old business unfinished. And I think that's it. And he did recommend that we vote to approve this format or to to to, uh, to vote to approve any change in our agenda format. Any questions? Um, okay. So actually, I think before we have discussion, we have to have a motion on it. Um, so is there a motion to approve the new agenda format? So moved. Second. 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 OK. All right. Now, any questions, thoughts, discussion? So just I'm sorry, I didn't since that wasn't in the document, I, I didn't get a chance to review it. Again. So, right. So is that what's being shown on the screen right now, the proposed format of the new one? Am I reading this right? You are. Um, so, Nicole my memory is that um, uh, that we that he was recommending a financial oversight an academic oversight and a board development and and not a facilities committee but I could be remembering that wrong mm. well, financial yeah, oversight yeah. and what was the what was the other one you said I thought he said academic oversight instead of academic uh, affairs. He, he did. And he said, you know, you can do it either or away. Um, and I think, you know, I, we could just take for this motion, we could take all of those um, actual committees off and just mm -hmm. leave it as standing committees, because as of, you know, currently we we are not voting on, you know, whether or not we lost resources as a standing committee. So we, we could right. certainly. Um, you know, right. So this. For, for so what you're saying is for right now, we could just say standing committee reports because we haven't yet made any changes to those. Right. And just, okay. you know, and I'll, and I'll, yeah, because that way, if we make any changes over there, we don't have to come back and make them here. It's just right. it's referring to what's in. Right. The, yeah, I like that. That help. Um, go ahead. Who, who is responsible for the correspondence? Would that always be because I will tell you as board chair previously, a lot of stuff went to both me and the um, executive director. So just so it's not like who's who would be responsible for bringing that? Would that be Melissa, Dr. Edwards? I guess Reed. whoever is in receipt of them. Um, it, it, I guess they never to me that, the, that the chair was getting correspondence, but. Oh, yeah. That's why I say some of this stuff where you say it's not management, but you will get a letter from oh, somebody. Yeah. So. I already am. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I love, but I no, it's say. not. It's not like we we are untouchable. If it's a problem with the school, it's going to be a problem with the board. My my preference, and Dr. Edwards, feel feel free to weigh in on this one. But my preference is that Doc that the superintendent would take the lead on that because I'll be real honest. There is some court. 
pieces of you know, some emails and things that I get that I don't really understand <laughs> that I have to say to her, what is this? And do I need to do anything with it? So I think the intention of that is not that she or I or, or either of us would share every piece of correspondence, but anything that is, um, you know, important for the board to be aware of. Um, so Dr. Edwards, your thoughts? Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know how, if this would be advisable, but considering that that's going to fall under the superintendent report, could that just be another bullet under enrollment? Oh, oh. just condense it together. So it's an always a, a standing topic to be covered under the superintendent report. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. I, I especially like that suggestion. <laughs> then it's very clear. Um, okay. What does everybody else think? I know we're sort That's of great. wordsmithing. Okay. Um, and then my, my other question is, and I, again, I, I'm, I can't remember exactly when, if it was during the retreat or what, but I, uh, my memory is that having certain clubs or groups have a standing spot on the um, on the agenda is not advisable just because it means that there are a lot of other groups who don't have that same direct link to the board. And I wonder if those things should either either have like a, a club report where people could ask if they want to report or or have that also be under the superintendent's report because it, it seems like as dr edwards sometimes has administ the other administrators present to us and things like that she could coordinate with with groups not just booster and student government but robotics and other groups and maybe highlight different groups on different you know different months just so that we're um making sure that all all groups have representation but that's again i don't remember when that wh whether that was in the retreat or if it was something i read oh you're you're on mute nicole sorry yeah i don't remember discussing that but when i was creating this i wasn't sure um whether or not to include those. Um, Dr. Edwards, do you have a preference? I think that it would be best to take off the clubs and put them under the superintendent report, not these specific clubs, but just club report or fundraising report or something in those in those lines, um, just so that it's all it's all filtered through me, because um, I think that's what we're working towards now is message alignment, uh, execution versus ensuring, and I think that would just be one more thing to to just put under the superintendent report. Okay. So Nicole, the the athletic report, um, as we just heard with Lori. Um, was about fundraising, which I mean, has some history in, in, in how, you know, they got to, um, we, we were asking them to come to board meetings. So, um, but now that should, with these new policies, really all funnel through Dr. Edwards anyway. So, you know, just so I'm looking at this right, is what's on the right of your screen, is that actually the second page of what's on the left of the screen? Correct. Okay, all right, I get it. Should we so, have a bullet for academic update under the super, superintendent's report? I'm sorry, what, Benji? Should we have academic update as a bullet item under the superintendent's report? Um, That's really broad, okay. like what would... I, I, th I think that on the agenda, this is where if you start putting things in bullets, you're starting to say what must be reported, right? Um, I, I don't, I don't know why on an agenda we would put those bullets. I mean, a leader is supposed to bring the stuff that's relevant 
to us based on the time and context. Because if yeah. you well, yeah. well, something I think Dr. Carpenter says something should always be reported every month, like change in enrollment mm -hmm. for for Dr. Edwards. So that could be a bullet. I don't know if every, but I agree with you, Rod. Be, I mean, um, Rodney, because this would make it seem like every superintendent's report she had to talk about clubs, which maybe that's. Maybe that's true, or maybe that's not something that she would talk about every single month. I don't know. Probably not. I probably wouldn't talk about it every yeah, single I month. Wouldn't think so either. <laughs> then maybe it just needs to come off completely, and at my discretion, I'll bring it up as needed. And I think the other two, like to Dawn, to what you were saying, the changes in enrollment and correspondence from DPI, those are there so that um, because you know, if there are significant changes in enrollment or significant pieces of correspondent fr correspondence from DPI, the board needs to know. And so, yeah, those there, on there. There, there, there's definitely been, you know, a previous example where nobody knew that that, that a piece of important <laughs> correspondence came to the school and nobody was aware of it. Right. Well, Nicole, even under the um, closed session, for, it says closed session for personnel and administrative discussions as needed, and it cites to the 143-318.11A6, and that section A, specifically subsection 6, is relates to personnel matters. So yeah. we may Let, just want to say 11A, and then, yeah. however, when Jane, when we go, whoever makes the motion to go into closed session, it would have to be specified under which subsection verbally. Um, yeah. I, I like that. And yeah. And in our last minutes, I, I wrote down the applicable closed session, you know, um, sections. So, um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, could you f maybe forward those to me <laughs> if I'm the one? If I, I don't know if I have to make yes. the motion or not, but I usually well, just read whatever is written on the agenda. So, yeah. Absolutely. I just sent them over to Dr. Edwards earlier this week. So I will send them. I'll just forward that to you as well. Perfect. Well, th they're in the minutes. So it last month's minutes, I thought. Yeah. OK. Well, um, yeah, I, that way I'll just if, if I'm the one doing it, I just want to make sure that I do it right. So, OK. Yeah. Other other thoughts, comments about the agenda? There's really not a lot of, of um, major changes. I think it's really just tightening things up. And um, I'm also going to be looking at and and um, um, at, at trying to streamline some of the uh, procedures during meetings so that we maybe don't necessarily have to take a roll call vote on simple things like the agenda and the minutes. Um, so there. Oh, at one point, one point we had um, used a consent agenda item. Is that w because we didn't want to go through all, you know, some of the little things that were just quick? I don't know. We haven't used it in a while, I think. But um, is I don't know if it's, you know, necessary. But so I think my understanding and Paul and Michelle, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there are two different things. There is a unanimous consent that I think is just for um, sort of standard things like the agenda and the minutes that basically, uh -huh. unless somebody objects or, or wants to um, a point of order, uh, make a point of order, then, then that's just sort of considered to be consent. And then there's a separate consent agenda that we could create for things that, would typically need to be voted on, but that we feel pretty confident that everybody agrees on. Is right. that an accurate way to describe it, Paul and Michelle? Yeah, I think so, Jane. And it's not something that I am real well versed in, um, but that sounds right. Um, Paul, what you're saying. That, is that your, that's your understanding. Is that right? Yes. That and, right? and what it comes down to with the consent agenda is it, it as you said, those regular items, that are um, is paying a bill or approving a bill uh, that are, uh, do not require discussion on their own. And um, that really comes down in reading some of that. It comes down to what the culture of the board is, as well as your, your policies as to what um, requires 
further board approval or further discussion and in, in, in some of those things. I think on, on one hand, being able, we've eliminated a lot that goes on the agenda uh, for approval. So that's a good thing, uh, consolidating that down, but that just may be an, an issue as to where we look and see, are there opportunities for that? Or is it so seldom there's no need to adopt it? So. That's, that's a, a really good point. And I do think that potentially if we do create an ad hoc um, policy committee, that again, that's something that could be, we could decide at that level whether we also want to um, begin using a consent agenda moving forward. I think the unanimous consent is more, that's just sort of a culture thing that um, for those, those standing things that need to happen, the agenda, approving the agenda, approving the minutes, that we, we wouldn't necessarily have to take a roll call vote every time um, to save time. And, and, and particularly in this setting when, you know, like if we were, if we were all together, we, we wouldn't necessarily be calling each person individually, but doing that to, uh, you know, approve the agenda in a minute seems a little silly, but, um, but anyway, I just wanted to give you all a heads up on, on that, that I, that I'm looking at, at, at trying to, to, to change a little bit of that, of the way that the, the meetings are run just to, just for efficiency's sake, which tonight is definitely has not been efficient um, in terms of timing. So sorry about that. There was a lot on the agenda, but okay. Um, there is, then, a then just, sorry. Well, I'd, I'd like to just make one last comment circling sure. back to what Benji said. So what, what I observed in listening to this discussion is that the agenda says one thing, but then there's, there's a sense of expectations from, what the superintendent would provide us from an information perspective. And, and then there's this thing, this, this calendar that we're talking about building that we talked about with Dr. Carpenter, right? So for example, Benji asked about like the academic reports. Okay, well, if, if we're not putting in here as a superintendent's report that, that we need an update on that, we've, I've seen this before, right? We don't say it's due. So then three quarters of the way in the year and it ha hasn't happened, people ask questions. So is that the kind of thing that we are thinking about putting in that calendar of events that would have to be done? I'm going to make it up right at the end of every quarter or a trimester or middle of the year. So are, are we going to put that kind of stuff on the calendar and just not put it into the agenda? Ab absolutely. And we, we'll go over that in just a sec. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. That's a but, great question. Being, being, does that satisfy where you were coming from about, that. Yes, sir. That does. Just okay. need to cover somewhere somehow. Perfect. Okay. okay. Great. Other thoughts, questions, comments. All right. There is a motion on uh, an open motion to approve the uh, new board of directors. <coughs> excuse me. Agenda format. It has been seconded. So, um, all in favor, Robbie. Uh, Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Don. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion carries. So this is our new uh, uh, agenda format. Oh, I just thought of one thing. Oh, did you put the, is the new mission on there? The new mission statement? Yeah, it was right. on there. Okay, good. Okay, the one that we just approved. I just want to make sure. That we just switch out the mission to the new mission statement. That's all. I'm not yep. sure that it got switched. Okay. It did it, but yes. Okay. All right. And then um, the next thing under new business is the new format for the board um, meeting minutes. Um, my understanding is that we don't necessarily need to vote on this, that this is more of just a, um, a sort of inf informational uh, piece. So, uh, Nicole, do you want to just sort of tell people how that how that's going to change? Sure. And and, you know, Dr. Carpenter talked about that and I'm working on that. And, um, you know, this is something Rodney has talked about a lot and something that we've really needed is an, an accountability piece in the minutes where it says, OK, so, you know, Rodney said he would do X and on X date and, you know, just have some accountability there to ensure as we move forward, that tasks are given dates and people accountable. So um, it will, the, 
this week's or this month's meetings will have that format. And uh, and if you have any suggestions or things you'd like to do a little bit different, just let me know. Great. Um, thank you so much for that. I think that that will help everybody. And, and again, those meeting minutes then will be put into the um, the yes. folder for each board meeting. So if you want to go back in and check after the fact at what the action items were and what you were um, either what you volunteered yes. for or what you were volunteered for, <laughs> um, um, you can go in there and look too. Okay. So thank you for um, taking the lead on that, Nicole. Uh, questions. I know we didn't open up a, I didn't think that, that we needed to vote on that. I don't think, cause it's just changing the meeting minutes a little bit. Okay. The next thing under new business is the systematic oversight calendar creation. Again, something that was recommended, um, by Dr. Carpenter. Um, I, I think under, on my, on my email, I think I, I posted that, um, Nicole and Dr. Edwards would work together and with potentially with other people um, at their request. And so, again, um, Nicole, Dr. Edwards, do you have uh, an update on that? Yes, um, Dr. And, uh, Dr. Edwards and I met and we went through the list of potential to do's for the year and she gave me her realistic dates and times. And so I'm going to fill those into the spreadsheet. And then I'd like to meet with um, probably maybe Benji and Rodney to look at the financial, the finance piece, because that's kind of a large part of it, and then put it in the shared drive. And we'll all just kind of need to work together to make it a little more realistic. Because, you know, as we work through it, you know, June is going to get packed, as Dr. Edwards and I talk, discuss. Um, and uh, kind of work through that. So I think we should have a um, proposed uh, calendar for to vote on for in the October meeting. Okay, great. So so you'll just to make sure that that I'm understanding the you'll you you've got a draft started. You're going to talk with Benji and Rodney about finances, and then you'll drop that into the into the shared drive. Will you just send everybody yes. a, a short email to let us know it's in we'll there do. to look at? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I need to meet with Michelle about board development and I forgot right. that piece. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that also once it's in the shared drive, if there are things that people think of that um, we would like to see on there, that's certainly something that we can um, make suggestions about. But, um, but I think that that will, I think that will go a long way that in conjunction with the new agenda format will go a long way to um, what, again, Rodney has been our, um, he has historically been our systematic oversight calendar, <laughs> yeah. reminding us all of, of what we said and when we said we would have it due by. And so um, appreciate that and looking forward to having the, uh, a document that we can all uh, pay attention to. Yeah. Okay, we are, we are coming up close to the end of... Uh, I'm getting old, my memory's failing me. I can't remember them all. What? I said, I'm getting old, my memory's failing me. I can't remember them all. Please write them down. Well, hey, I didn't I didn't want to point that out, but since, since you said that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the next thing under new business is uh, the uh, ad hoc board policy committee. Um, the... Uh, and again, on this one, I, I do uh, will need to have a motion so that we can discuss it, but to discuss the creation of uh, an ad hoc, not a standing, an ad hoc policy committee to uh, review the uh, the policies, at the, find, first of all, find all of the policies that currently exist, review those. Um, assess those and also look for, um, you know, what's missing. And in my mind, this is also something that um, we can use those, uh, some of those hours that we have approved for Dr. Carpenter to help us with what we should have in our board policy um, list. So in order to discuss this, do I have a motion to create an ad hoc board policy committee? So moved. 
Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All right. Great. So um, thoughts, questions. This seemed to me to be the most efficient way to go about um, trying to get a handle on our policies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, but uh, you know, I, I want to hear what everybody's thoughts are on that. Anybody have concerns about doing this? Say that again, Jane. Does anybody have concerns or think that, that creating this committee is a is not the right direction for us to go? No. No, I do think we, you know, we and as Paul mentioned before, we attempted to try to um, get the get our arms around the policy, even you know, creating a policy on policy. So I think we do need to re revisit that and get it organized, you know, where are they going to be housed? How are they going to be numbered? Putting them in, you know, whatever um, categories we, we want to put them in. I mean, we, we probably will never have as many policies as the school has, but, um, you know, so I think it's a good idea and it falls right in line with everything else that we're trying to do, so. Wonderful. Do I, uh, do I have anyone who would be willing to chair that committee for us <laughs> before I start naming names? Well, I would be willing to work on it because it's ad hoc okay. to, just, to just put forth some, some um, suggestions for how we could organize. Perfect. Stuff. Do I have anybody else who would be willing to work on it with Don? Please. No, especially I mean, if why, 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 all, all sense resources. I actually I'm more faster I'm by myself. <laughs> I'm, I'm, glad to work under, I'm, I'm glad to work under uh, Don's leadership on this as, as, <laughs> as the ad hoc committee chair, uh, as the policies are. Well, you know what? It's so we're we're in the middle of policy things at JCC, and everyone's complaining because it's such a huge committee. And uh, it, and it's really like very draining. So I'm fine to just like put the framework in place, and then we, then to have people comment on it. So perfect. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Is there anybody else who's just dying to help Don and Paul, or are we all pretty comfortable with them putting the framework together? I, I'm 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 good with that. I think that probably um, the one thing that I will say is that, well, two things. One, I, like I said, I think we can probably leverage Dr. Carpenter to help us with some of this. Um, but the other thing is that I do think that the fiscal policies are going to be a big sort of blind spot in terms of risk and everything. And so um, Benji and or Rodney, if you guys would be willing to, since it's an ad hoc, maybe when they get to that point, work with them on on those would that be okay yes ma'am let, let, let me just make sure i understand the charge are we creating these policies or are we just creating a framework of how policies are are created approved and you know more the procedures like where they're housed how they're numbered or are we creating policies because i didn't think well kind of what i'm thinking is that I would like uh, you to at least make recommendations of where there are holes in policy in our policies. Like once you get them all organized, right? Once you assess them, then assess them. And I think that's where Dr. Carpenter can help. But I feel like we're going to have some glaring holes. We're going to have some areas where we don't have policy or where policies or where our policies are not probably not sufficient. And again, once what my hope is for the ad hoc committee is that you all will look at what we currently have, get it organized, numbered, all that good stuff. And then the way that I see it is sit down with Dr. Carpenter and, and try to assess what, where our blind spots are, because that's a huge risk assessment piece. And I'm, my guess, my gut is that, that the biggest area that we're going to have uh, missing pieces is going to be fiscal policy. And that's when, I would like, even if you guys don't write them, what I'm hoping is that you can come to us with recommendations for what we do need to do moving forward. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah. So we can, you know, get some research, Paul, other charter yeah. schools and what the standard policies are. Yeah. And I think the other thing is kind of sketching out policy versus procedure because some of the fiscal, there's fiscal policies, but there'll be fiscal procedures. Right. They're right. going to be more detailed, I think, than the policy. And, and I'm sure Dr. Edwards would be willing to consult with you as well, work with you uh, to make sure that, that, you know, we've got that line between the school policies and procedures and the board level policies and procedures. Um, well, and, and how they intersect because there's some school policies that actually say you can go to the board for appeal. So we need to make sure that we, we know where, what policies intersect into our realm. Right. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I agree with that too. Sorry. Um, okay. So we have a, uh, a motion. Sorry, I'm getting tired. We have a motion on uh, an open motion on the table to create an ad hoc policy committee with, uh, Dawn chairing and Paul, um, sitting on that. Um, we, we have a second. So all in favor, Robbie. Uh, okay. Paul. All right. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. All right. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Um, Don and Paul have to go forth and conquer. Thank you for your uh, volunteering. Uh, last thing under new business is the risk management assessment plans. Again, I don't think this is anything that um, we need to vote on. It's more informational than anything. Um, this is something that um, I, in my email, I, I said Dr. Edwards is going to take the lead on. And so um, I just wanted to make sure that we sort of close that loop in this uh, in this setting so that we're all up to speed on that. She's got um, several things that she's working on. Dr. Edwards, did you want to talk about those now or did you want to just briefly to say what you're looking at? Sure, I'll, I'll speak very, very briefly. Um, looking at school security, looking at financial controls, looking at um, outside counsel for reviewing handbooks and those those types of things. There's a couple of other things that are um, potential risks that I'm working through, but that's that's where I'm at right now. Sorry, muted. Uh, <laughs> um, great, thank you so much. And again, I think especially with like um, some of the risk mitigation, those might be areas where uh, Dr. Carpenter could prove helpful as well. So, okay. Um, I believe we made it through new business and um, are ready to, um, I'm ready to hear a motion to go into closed session for personnel and administrative discussion. So move. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Benji. Okay. Um, all in favor, Robbie. Jane. This, uh, Jane, I'm sorry. This is Michelle. Yeah. Um, we just need to be specific about, um, is it both for personnel and administrative or is it just for personnel? Um, because if it's for both, we need to specify which sections we're going under closed session I for. believe it's just for personnel. Is that true, Dr. Edwards? Yes, that's what that's what I mean. That's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. So just for personal. So I, I can I okay. I'm I'm gonna um, break out into and test my parliamentary procedure here. I'm gonna move awesome. to amend the motion to go into closed session pursuant to NCGS 143-318.11A6 to discuss personnel matters. Okay. So that that move to amend. Okay. The main motion. Okay, great. So uh, all in favor. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. All in favor. Robbie. Uh, Paul. 
Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion carries. So I will see. Everyone. Now we have to vote, Dawn. I mean, Jane. Now we have to vote on the main motion. We just voted to amend the motion. Now we have to vote on the main motion. Oh, okay. All right. So sorry. That's all right. No, thank you. All right, Michelle. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here and you're on top of it going into the third hour that we're on this. Um, okay. Um, so the motion is to go into closed session. The amended, there is now an amended motion on the table to go into closed session. All in favor. Robbie. Uh, Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Aye. Uh, Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Uh, okay, so everybody, let's go to the uh, um, closing link. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Who are we? We're all here. Are we all here? Okay. Um, so I just need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Robbie. Uh, Paul. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Dawn. Aye. Nicole. Thanks. Aye. Benji. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Okay. Um, uh, as of 9.22 p.m. on uh, September 22nd, the New Star School Board is uh, officially adjourned. Okay. Thanks, guys. Right. See you. Thank you.